met a gypsy. Now, if you've been following the podcast recently, you would know that we're on a massive health kick uh, as we get ready to take on World Vets at Glen Helen in November of 2023. Athletic Greens is not only an all-in-one formula that helps me just cover all my nutritional bases, uh, it's also the first healthy habit that I have uh, that starts every single day. AG1 is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients of the highest quality that are able to offer gut health support, mood support, can affect your energy each day and contribute to overall healthier looking hair and skin. start this shit up adam cincerello we're here man we're doing it i'm pumped me too it's been a long time i'm i'm ready to res- or to trash these old clips that you have from <laughs> yeah. our interview in my in my office when i was like 11 years old uh, yeah yeah dude they got some good play though I've, no i they have when, when we like didn't have content and griff's going through the drives and he's just getting those ac clips uh, so i'm like i am mad at it yeah no absolutely <laughs> no that's crazy though i feel like you were just kind of getting into it when we sat down what was 10 years ago well yeah literally 10 years ago i think and so that was for a project that i was trying to get over the line with red bull and it never never ended up happening but one of those one of those or like that interview in particular made me think dude like you could probably do this like i enjoyed that combo with you because it was about it was about like talent where does talent come from are you born is it nature versus nurture? like that was the whole kind of line of the conversation (laughs) and uh and yeah i just remember leaving there being like one ac's a fucking g and then two i was like i think i could probably do this like this is actually quite cool i remember it too you were kind of the first one to kind of ask me some introspective questions you know some things i had the answer to that i hadn't been asked yeah i look back and obviously i've kind of grown into more of somebody that's um i guess a little bit more introspective right and i think you were kind of the first person to like all this stuff i had to say you were asking these questions i'm like hell yeah man (laughs) yeah and you were were so young too which is crazy because i think you just you just got to florida uh like we just said you just bought that claremont house and yeah you were just like pro circuit i think you still had like a bell helmet and thor on when we filmed like that day yeah it's crazy man i thought i was so grown up at that time too well i mean to be fair you were like obviously in comparison to 10 years down the road no but i mean i think you were probably what were you 16 yeah i think i was 17 in that interview right there dude and you grew a lot like even physically like mentally everything it's crazy a lot i think mentally i've always been just hanging around older people so um and i just think the sport and pressure and all that kind of helps you mature but um man i just in terms of my physical stature and just how i looked even sometimes i'll watch some old races from then you know 2014 2015 and especially 14 my rookie year i'm like dude i saw a clip the other day from that and i'm I'm like like, who let me out there that's what i was thinking i'm like he probably shouldn't have been racing when i yeah when i made my pro debut in 2013 in outdoors i was like 114 pounds that's crazy on a pc bike yeah thing absolutely ripped Hit hit uh, Larocco's leap second lap. His claim to fame. <laughs> Probably it's second the best part of that too. year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was it was crazy. But I remember that interview definitely. I'd never really done anything like it. it. Wasn't really. It was just a little kind of side project. And yeah, I mean, probably was a big part of like the start of the podcast. Wish I started it literally back then, but hindsight. Well, you've done great things since, man. I'm a, I'm a fan of your work. I oh, appreciate it. I'm a fan of your podcast too, actually. You like it? I really do. Yeah. I listen to, I couldn't believe how fast you guys got the Iron Man one out. Easier when you're only doing audio. Um, yeah. A lot easier. But so. Dude, I was pumped. I literally listened to it. I'm obviously on the West Coast. So, yeah. you know, you're on the East Coast. So I just, I was sitting there doing some work and I was like, dude, I can crush a 40 minute potty right now. Piece of piss. Right. We've been trying to keep it at like an hour. Yeah. And it's one of those things where I don't want it to take up too much of my time. Yeah. You know, obviously priorities. Uh, so it's not something that's really scripted. I have some ideas in my head and we kind of just yeah. turn on the film, you know, turn it on and, and start talking. But 
um, Converge Media, Shane Doyle, who's my co-host, that's yeah. his company. He yeah. does my social media now. Do a great job, by the way. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, they're awesome, and they, they helped me do the um, brought the vlog back this past weekend for Iron Man. So just all this kind of stuff that I guess used to be a bit of a distraction because they're there, a resource for me. I'm able to because. I want to put out content that I'm that I'm stoked on. Yeah, you know, something 100%. that contributes uniquely to the culture. To to yeah, to yeah. the culture, just to, just to anything. I don't want to just be. I just got burnt out on it. Yeah. Really, I mean, I've been on the social media thing for. I caught it right at the perfect time. Yeah. You know, kind of. My last few years of amateurs was. In, I think Instagram was like 2010, 2011. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and so now I've been able to kind of outsource that and it's been great. So I'm able to do this podcast and bring back vlogs and stuff. Yeah. And, and, you know, back in the day I was like trying to film and edit all that stuff myself. And it was just, it. it was just too much. Dude, it's my full-time job and I don't do that. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm a perfectionist too, which I've been working on, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, it, it would take me, I had final cut pro yeah. everything, man. Yeah. It's funny though. Like the, I, it's definitely a distraction if you're doing it all yourself. But yeah. if you're not doing it all yourself, it's an outlet. Like I, I look at it in a completely different way. Like I heard that Alden shut down Craig's podcast, basically. It's like Craig was doing his thing. Right. And then it's like distraction, can't do it. You can't win if you if you continue to do this, which I just, it sucks to hear that that's the way that things get treated because they have a huge following. You know, he's got like a brand as his family, even, you know, like the Craigs, it's not just him. But I think that, yeah, if you can get it to the point where you're not doing any of the yeah. editing, you know, if you're just sitting down and doing the show and leaving, then it just becomes an outlet. And I mean, it, for it, me, it's like that now. Like I don't do any editing. I don't post any clips. I don't make any of it. It's all done by our team. And dude, my quality of life has just gone through, through the, roof. the roof so much extra time because of it you know and, and you can focus more on on the content itself and, exactly. and not worry about the rest yeah i think it's all about when it comes to distractions things like that it's all about your relationship with it right yeah. i mean you see well to take probably the best athlete in the united states lebron james and how many like yeah, you know, he's got the uninterrupted, it. Yeah, and he does yeah, all yeah, these yeah. different things. So That's I mean, so just true. one, just one example right there of mainstream sports. I feel like Draymond Green has his podcast. There's so many different guys that are competing at the very top level of sports yeah. that do have some other outlets. And for me, it's always been about balance because naturally, all I want to do is train, sit in my house, and think about dirt bikes <laughs> yeah. all the time. You yeah. know, it's just it's and there's just, a point of diminishing returns there. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's just about it's about balance having a yeah having an outlet and obviously creating cool content in the process, but it's all about your relationship with it and um, you got to be able to prioritize things, of yeah. course. But I think the general perception of if you're doing anything besides yeah, this is just it's just not you know it's just not real. I, it, it's I just not real. Yeah, and and for you, like, not everyone's gonna suit that. Not everyone's going to suit a podcast straight totally. after. Not everyone's going to suit a vlog. But it's like, you do. You know, like, Basha couldn't sit down and do that podcast the way that you do it. But he's got this BAM TV that's like yeah, a different... You know what I mean? Thing. Like, everyone's kind of like doing their thing. Like, find the thing that where you fit and what is like an outlet for you and then go and do it because you can just spin your wheels, <clears> man. Like, you can... If, if you just live in that box of... I'm a racer, I'm a trainer, this is all I do, I can't do anything else. Like, you're gonna live a pretty shitty career and then leave yeah. without much on the back of it, you know? Totally. I I think growing up all through my career, I've been, or I guess I was worried about perception, you know, because I've always... For sure. It, you well, have, you've been under a microscope. Yeah, I've been under a microscope and I've always been maybe even too aware sometimes. And as I've gotten older, I've kind of learned how that benefits me and how that doesn't. Yeah. But in terms of like worrying what everybody else thinks, I've always been a bit more of an open guy, does different content, goofy stuff, things like that. And it's, I was always like, even with the podcast, right? If I wasn't comfortable, if I wasn't more confident and like more comfortable in my own skin, I wouldn't have done that because yeah. the kind of 
I guess the voice of criticism is the loudest. You know, the guy yeah. saying it's a distraction. He doesn't yeah. want it. Yeah. He's not this, whatever. You know, growing up, I worried about that a lot. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I now have gotten to a place personally where I've given myself some freedom to be like, dude, it's all this is just what yeah. you want to do. Just just yeah. do it. You know, at the end of the day, as long as you know you're doing everything you can. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. And there's only like, there's only so many hours in a day that you can that you can train and that you can like quote unquote grind and i was literally just watching a clip um apparently shimoda didn't ride at all this week went one one yeah he rode like six laps at glen helen <laughs> it did, did literally the least amount of work possible got the best result possible like he couldn't do any better than what he did and jack miller doesn't ride a moto gp bike daniel ricardo doesn't drive an f1 car none of the nascar boys get it like you know there's there's a i th- i think with our sport we've got such like a race to the bottom mentality and it's like across the board and it's like you if you're not going to be the guy that's going to train five days a week then there will be that guy right. like our sport doesn't have any constraints on training in that way and so all these other sports they kind of have these like inbuilt constraints and moto read it's a fully domestic series like there's no international flights there's tracks everywhere you kind of like set your life up yeah to fucking grind it's a Con- lifestyle i mean through sure. and through yeah yeah i think um but that's yeah. like that's a there's a definitely like a negative that does come with that because then you that gives athletes the option to just fucking bury themselves for oh and you three see it four, and we say all the time and if you don't want to be that guy someone will be that guy and it's like a it's a problem in our sport but very hard to get away from and yeah it's difficult even you show up at the practice track right and most of the time now we have training facilities where everybody's riding together and um Early in my career when I was with Eldon and I was riding with Jason Anderson, Marvin, Dungey, Villapoto, all these guys, right? It's like there's so much ego too. You yeah, Every day yeah, you're yeah. doing a bunch of volume, but also like as I've gotten older and I've been around a lot of people that have done well, won championships, and they're not going – a hundred percent all the time yeah. you know they know they know when to turn it on and, and when not to um and i think some some younger guys kind of get trapped in that i have to give everything to every day every day and i agree that you always have to practice deliberately yeah you have to be focused on improving something you can't just be out there going through the motions but in terms of just all out raw intensity that's when you see guys kind of through the season starting to, yeah. you know, starting to dip. But yeah. we definitely have that mentality in dirt bikes. It's just you cannot do enough. Man, the ego side of it as well. Oh, like, man, it's crazy, wild. crazy. Bro. Like even uh, say this for all the people, there's a jujitsu reference coming 10 minutes into the podcast. But Love that's it. sometimes the hardest thing for me to deal with going to the gym is not the physicality. It's not the training. It's not any of the drilling it's not how long i got to beat nothing it's the fucking ego like i literally have to go there and stare my ego in the face every yeah. single day when i train and i'm either gonna get fucked up by someone and totally. that doesn't feel good right like ego what physically fine ego wise especially if you know you could beat that but like so there's a lot that you like every drive i'm driving home from the gym my my wife she trains with me and she's all happy and like best day of her life i'm literally driving home questioning every fucking decision i've ever made in, in my life. entire life to lead up to that point to get smushed into the ground by a dude from dagestan and it's like that ego element that's the hardest part go to a training facility with jason anderson cooper webb marvin muscan yourself and then you got alden and you're dealing with his ego you know that that's a lot every single day to just Dude. rock up and just put on the face that you have to put on to go to your job every day it's i think uh what's what's the quote that all humanity's problems come from an inability to sit uh, sit in a room alone with yourself like yeah, yeah i genuinely think that if you are interested in finding out like you know what's best for you yeah. you know like you can figure out what you need to do um and kind of have that clarity if, if, if you kind of sit with yourself enough and yeah. and it's 
that stuff gets like knowing yourself, it gets difficult when the ego is like, dude, I got to go so hard. I got to do this. I got to do that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like, we, we all know really what's best for us. And it goes back to the point about just feeling like we have to grind all the time. I mean, I, I grew up in that culture, so yeah. that's natural for you me. You probably pioneered some that's, of that culture. Oh, a hundred percent, man. I mean, I was all, all in from seven years old and I felt like it was a job by the time I have memories from like eight or nine where I'm like holy shit like this is real <laughs> yeah you know I think um I don't remember it, anything about being eight yeah I just have like little little <laughs> tidbits here and there. but yeah I think um yeah you grow up in the culture right and then you got you got to figure out what's best for you and it's difficult when you always have that voice in your head like you know sometimes maybe I'm like I'm a little sick or something even Southwick this year I was I was sick, woke up sick as a dog, went there, it was hot. It was, it was just obviously a difficult track, right? And the second moto, I started feeling not so good. Yeah. Like I started getting a little bit dizzy and I had that voice in the back of my head, like, dude, I can't, I'm not going to fade and let these privateers pass me. You know, yeah, I actually true. ended up, a couple of them did end up getting me, right? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I almost killed myself. I, I, I got done with the race and I just passed out at the, at the asterisk rig, you know, and it's, so the, it's, it's, in a way it's like honorable, but in a way it's stupid. It's the yeah. ego saying there's, there's no, like, you know, I can't let people think I'm weak or this or yeah. that. Yeah. It's like, it's, it doesn't always serve you like harder and more isn't always better. And I being around so many guys in the sport, that's the common mistake is doing too much, like yeah. training too hard when you're sick or hurt or getting back on the bike too soon after an injury or things like that. That that's the most difficult thing that I have to kind of like I have a relationship with is yeah. is doing too much. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, even for me, like this year I've been training for, for the world vets thing. So I've been actually putting oh, in when is that? 5th of November. So I've still got a bit of time. Sick. <laughs> so, but it's like, this is the, I got, I got this watch like a year and a half ago or whatever. And like just been running the watch constantly. I've got all the data, all the, you know, the sleep, the body battery, like the HRV, just really diving into all of that. It's like, man, your body does not lie to you as no, well. And and there's a, it's a way smaller scale, obviously, but I got the same thing in my head. I'm like a few weeks, uh, a couple months out from this race. And I'm like, you're not fucking ready. Like <laughs> you've got yeah. so much work that you need to do. And then you see on your, on your watch that you didn't recover that night, but it's your only day that you've got to train. And then you're like, dude, do I do a cycle? Do I do a, so it's yeah. like your body doesn't lie to you. And there's, you guys you all listen. have the data. You all have the data. But then you're also faced with like the pro motocross schedule doesn't care. The weather doesn't care. Ty Masterpool doesn't care. No, <laughs> you know no, I mean? he doesn't. So you you guys are just like forced into this super gnarly position. Which is, it actually, like what kind of what I, I guess, struggle with with the most in my daily life is feeling like I'm not doing enough. Mm. And there's something about, going too hard doing a run and feeling like you're on the very edge bike ride riding whatever if you're if you're so far into that suffer it's like that's peace for me mm. so you know like yeah. i know i'm doing everything yeah. i have yeah, if i'm like if that, i'm hurting yeah. that bad but yeah. i mean yeah. how toxic is that right it's <laughs> yeah, like yeah. yeah i mean i think it's just it's all about just finding a way to be your best and have it be sustainable you know if it's always coming from that place of of ego one you're not going to feel fulfilled you're not going to be happy and two it's just not a sustainable way to live yeah yeah speaking of living so california we were just talking california before, yeah, we, now, yeah. before we started yeah i it's a funny conversation we, we sort of were talking about it but it's like temecula was the shittest place in the world when i like lived here 10 years ago but now that i'm older and in a completely different position in life i'm looking at it like this is the move <laughs> and you're like on a golf course and it's like the weather's amazing it's like kind of close is. to all this stuff so yeah it's way like, cheaper than over here man what oh dude Costa here's mesa were Jeez. you so were you here first i thought you were in orange county no never never in orange county for some reason i thought that you were here i know the andos here um there was like a, a lot of the kind of established 450 factory guys are 
You're not one of those. No, you, I mean, I, I I would say I'm an established factory 450 rider, but just not, I don't like the price tag category, over right? here. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm not yeah. paying two million for 800 square feet. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. insane, dude. It really is. I uh, I actually just bought a I bought a house um, yeah. on my golf course, Bear Creek in in Marietta, and it's funny because I think it's a good track like, that one. Yeah, no, it's it's super nice. They yeah. have like Q school out there and a bunch of yeah. At least when I go out there and shoot a hundred, I can say it was on a hard course. It, it actually is a really hard. It's course. difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I feel like I was one of the first. Obviously, Florida kid. Yeah. Moved down to Claremont when I was seventeen. Uh, I was like one of the first ones there. Obviously, you had Langston, you had JG that was there at his property, and then RV bought it, and it was kind of the whole Eldon crew. I was there. Um, you know, I was there until twenty twenty, and I've decided to move out here full time. It just kind of I, I have more fr- it was it was hard for me because I'm like two hours from my family and friends in Claremont yeah right? so and, you're not and, going anyway yeah and yeah. I don't really get to see them that much anyway yeah. and you know I am f- kind of friendly with some of the racers like Chase and Ken and these guys but it just wasn't I, I was training all day long riding doing all this had a sick house on a golf course there had everything I want but at the end of the day I didn't really have anybody to yeah to share anything with and um yeah, that was my move. My agent's not happy that I moved out here because the taxes and all that. But um, it's been a it's been fun for me. It's it was kind of difficult to. It's always been difficult for me to feel like I'm settling in one place. I yeah. moved a lot as a kid. Was always traveling, obviously. And um, yeah, my girlfriend and I bought this house and kind of feel like I put some roots down. I'm gonna be here for like five years or so. So yeah, it's a it's a pretty good spot. Yeah. And what's the, like, so you've got more of a network here, your girlfriend's from here. Like, is that kind of the main reason? Well, girlfriend's from England, actually. Oh, but really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, yeah, just friends, train, like Nick, obviously being yeah, out here, he's yeah, Marietta. Yeah, that, yeah. that was the biggest thing. Yeah. It's just to get as much value out of, out of um, him as I can, you yeah. know, a lot, a lot of things I need to work on in my riding too, like with this whole hand thing, kind of had to learn how to ride different. I need him there every day. Yeah. Just, just things like that. And, um, yes, it was just, I woke up one day and I'm just like, I'm coming and team kind of wanted me out here to test more and stuff too. So it worked out and yeah, it's a big tax bill, but it's been, I've I've been enjoying it. Have you been to England yet? Yeah. With your chick? Yeah. That's sick. Last August. Where about not to get too specific, but where's she from in the, uh, Marlowe. It's like 40 minutes like southeast of London. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, she's a D1 defi- um, D1 uh, field hockey. She plays for UMass. She's um, in her fifth year now getting her master's. Wow. So, what a G. Yeah, they're 2-0 and on the season. Just a quick shout out. Yeah, shout yeah she out. crushes it, man. It's, that's cool. Yeah, she's got uh, – she's like crazy fit. Anytime we go running, it's I can't even – it's ridiculous. She's Dude, so much dope. more athletic than me. That's super it's cool. It's hilarious, yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean – I guess like uh, I don't know. Obviously, I just got married, so I'm on a bit of a relation yeah. relation kick. Relationship Congratulations! Kick. Thank you, bro. Uh, I just it's funny. Like I've been talking to friends that are like my age or a little bit younger. It just seems like this crazy decision that you know people are like man fuck like tripping that you actually get married. But it's like man, I just really see the value in that shit these days. Like it's sure. been such a when you and it seems like you're on the very similar program you know like you get a really good partner that's down to like grind with you help you in your life understand like it's it's so much more man yeah it's so much it took me a long time to figure we won't get too deep into it but i had a lot of kind of you know i had a unique childhood with a lot of a lot of stuff a lot of great things but a lot of trauma too and it was baggage it comes with a lot of baggage and and you know obviously relationships were never really my never really my focus you know I wasn't I I wasn't really taught how to build relationships with other people and I've always had to actually as open as I am to people like they wouldn't think this but it's it's been really hard for me to learn how to get close to people Mm. like eat friends girlfriends anything it's like as soon as they get past a certain point I'm like and and that's something that I've worked on a shit ton the last from just childhood stuff yeah I mean I don't want I don't want to get too specific but um yeah, it's one of those things where I, in the last couple of years, I, you know, I've t- I talk about the last couple of years and it being difficult for me. And obviously it has been difficult in terms of like injuries, results, dirt bikes, all that. Yeah, but on the life side. But it's, it's on the life side, really. Yeah. I mean, yes, dirt bikes plays a big part in it. If you're not 
you don't have anything to distract yourself. You're not at the races or getting ready for something. I mean, it's my way of life. So mm. that is a challenge in itself, but it's, it's more so the, like the baggage we talked about what, you know, my relationships were always a mess. Like I, mm. you know, I was just, I had no idea what I was doing, not being able to get close to people, stuff like that. Turn 25, you kind of look around and you're like, this isn't really what I thought. Yeah. You know, and you're not out there like building relationships with people. It's not just going to come to your front door, you yeah. know, and yeah. being just focused on dirt bikes and, and nothing else. I, I kind of reached the, the top of the mountain in a way, you know, yeah. I a factory 450 rider got there, like everything I ever wanted. And dude, my family situation, like my, my parents got divorced and that wasn't great. And yeah. I was winning and everything was making all this money. And I was just, I was miserable. Yeah. It's so common. Though. Yeah, no, it like, is. It's, it's such a, yeah. I mean, it's which I think I say that to, to, I guess maybe to make you feel a bit better about it. No, though. it's I, not like you're, you know, it's as as shitty as it is. Like, there's so many people that it's so hard to to reach the tip of the spear in the way that you have. You have to be super one dimensional and, and I selfish. Think, yeah, and I think that's where some of that comes from. You know, and it's like there's, I guarantee that there would be just thousands and thousands of athletes that have just hit that top level that have that same moment where they're like Fuck, how did i get here like i know how i got here but then how did i get like here here you know to where it's like i'm not that happy yeah and you romanticize this place that you're going you're obviously mm. we're human beings that's what we do is you know whatever's next is going to be like make us happy or this is going to fulfill us or whatever right and i kind of reached the thing that i've always wanted and yeah it kind of had that realization but the way I, I mean, the way I really do look, and I was listening to your, to your podcast with Christian, you say a lot of beautiful mm. things come from low moments and it, it's weird, but in terms of results and like the challenges I've had in racing, so many things were in motion to get me to the place I am right now, mentally, like the things that, and I'll always keep a lot of this to myself, but the things mm. that I've had to overcome the last couple of years, like I wouldn't have been if I didn't have the challenges I had, I wouldn't have had to kind of go inward and figure that out. Mm. Like if I just got everything that I wanted and my shoulder didn't pop out of the socket in 2014 and I just went on a championship tear and was just Who knows sick, who you dude. are? Who knows? Yeah. And, and when I'm 35, I could have told you I'd be a miserable, miserable human being. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I just didn't have the tools. Yeah. And unfortunately I needed to fail. Like I needed to fail and and, you know, it's almost the motivation to obviously the motivation to kind of grow and improve myself is a lot just for quality of life. And for me, but a lot of it, too, is like for racing. Yeah, you get better at yeah, racing. So it's like I'm not this, yeah. I'm not being like overly introspective because I want to be some like monk or something. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of it has to do with performance. Like I have helps. to find yeah. a more sustainable yeah. way. Like I have to change my relationship with this thing so I can be the best, you know, the best I can be at it. And fortunately for me, that's um, also translated to a lot of good things just in my life. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I think it's so true. Like, I mean, I definitely had a, um, the podcast probably is what really forced me to look at what ego was essentially. It's like, I think I've, I've told the story before, but it's like, I remember show was doing good, just finished my studio and the, like the podcast, the studio in Oz is fucking sick. It's like a yeah. room like this, but it's just fully built. Everything about it's dope. And I'm just sitting in there and like, all I cared about was not wanting to sound like I had an ego. That really? was my whole thing. I was just like, I just, I don't want people to think I'm doing this for yeah. the wrong reasons. I don't want people to think I have an ego. Like I was so egotistically obsessed with not having an ego. And it was like a, you know, a journey of years of, you know, I started with like meditation and that right. sort of stuff. Yeah, but yeah we've like, talked about that a little bit. Yeah. And you, you like, you get down the road with it a little bit, but you're still kind of sitting here like, what the fuck is like, what am I doing? And you've got these weird things in your head that in the position that you're in shouldn't really be in your head kind of thing yeah but then it's like it really forced me to go like super inwards and when i did it's like i lost nothing like i probably well i lost a lot of stuff mentally right but i didn't lose anything that made me me i performed better my relationships got better my business got better and like literally everything got better by I guess you could say like losing parts of yourself in a sense, you know? So yeah, it's not it's a like lot. a, it's not like a, 
a cop out kind of. Uh, yeah, I know. I know you know what, you know yeah, what you're yeah. saying. It's like a it's like a bit of this hippie woo woo cop out. It's like it's kind of not that because you do perform better when you've kind of gone through a certain amount of shit oh. and you've looked at yourself a certain way. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, my my relationship with racing. Obviously, I had a really good amateur career. I, you know, I won a lot. I was highly touted or whatever, but um, kind of just how things, and I have a lot of people uh, that I'm really grateful that, that made that happen for me. You know, I, you can't do it on your own, and I'm grateful for that. Like, I live a very privileged, privileged life, but just how everything ended up happening, my, my relationship with racing was so, it was just, it was shitty. Like I, yeah. I love dirt bikes, but I hated them at the same time. Yeah. You know, it's like all this pressure, everything attached to it. And everybody, you know, we talk about perspective all the time in sports. It's even mainstream sports now, but it was just my self worth was completely wrapped Tied up to the result in dirt yeah. bikes, you know? Yeah. So you can imagine like when I turned pro and that was like the first time racing kind of stopped working out. Like I, I started to have these big, big hurdles and you know, it was, it was tough, dude. It mm. was, it was tough. It's just ego is, I was so, I was just buried in it. Mm. Buried. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't, uh, it's like, there's a certain skill set or tools that you would need to have to be able to deal with that because people have been dealing with this same philosophy of life for like literally yeah, yeah. thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years and it's like i think when you're an athlete when you're an athlete it's like very black and white because you do have a super tangible result so it's like i'm an athlete i'm have the ability to win championships i should win championships and then it's like you either yes or no to that and it's like if no then what like, wh- how do you feel? Right. How, and so that kind of... So then, okay, that's the athlete version of that. Then this is just the everyday life version of this. It's like, I'm married. I've got two kids. I got an okay job. I got a roof over my head. Yeah. But I'm not that happy. No, so totally. So it's, like, it's the same it's thing. A- it's just you've got such a, a very distinctive vessel that you can use with a very clear result. Absolutely. And I think one of the things you just said, like, I was all always been kind of aware and I've always been aware of how, even though, you know, I had some things, probably people would be surprised about things I had to go through that were difficult. Everybody deals with stuff, yeah. right? I was so keenly aware that I was, that how lucky I was and how fortunate I was to, to get the, thing, you know, uh, okay. you do the thing. So it this. actually set me back. Yeah. yeah Cause I was yeah. like, no, dude, I'm yeah. fine. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah. You know, and I, I was kind of, I guess that's when I was listening more t- to other people and how other people see me is like, yeah. like life is just sick all the time, you know, like yeah. you're awesome. You win everything, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I would, I was kind of like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm good. I'm good. And that, that set me back five years. Yeah. 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 Because, and I think that there's, this is why I think a lot of famous people end up committing suicide is because it's like, you're at the top of the fucking mountain. Like Chester Bennington, all time yeah. favorite yeah, singer awesome. of like, bro, I went to probably 30 fucking Linkin Park concerts in my life. Dude had it all, you know? And it's like when you're depressed, like violently depressed yeah. when you have everything you tied the Beatles for number one consecutive debut albums and you're fucking depressed like how's that to deal with you know like and then you'd think oh well like I must be super fucked up because if I've got all this and I'm this guy and I've done this and I've done that yeah. and, and I'm still depressed like there's no hope for me at least it a normal person they don't have all that you know yeah. so it's like and I- it comes with a lot yeah i think i think for me and i don't want this to get like too negative where i mean i think everybody knows i think you know like i'm generally like i'm a pretty happy guy i'm pretty stoked with it hasn't been perfect but life's never perfect never goes according exactly to plan and like i said i feel that all these chips have kind of fallen perfectly for me to get to a place now where where i can enjoy it but something that i struggled with growing up too is people put you people put you in this box like yeah. right here and you're you're not really allowed to move from that like once people once people have a impression of you or identify you with something 
I think me, I have always been more of a deep thinker and, you know, like to learn. And I've always felt like a bit of an outsider in the sport, yeah. just in terms of how I think. Not, I'm not talking any like superiority type. Yeah. I don't view myself as like above anything. I just feel a little bit different. And I think I dealt with, I guess, some of that um, just uncomfortable feeling. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it depression, but it's it was difficult for me because I felt like I had to be this guy. Like, like, like just like yeah. we talked about, like always having to work, always said like, don't do a YouTube video. Don't yeah. do this. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah. And you know, I was like, okay, like I'll be that guy. Like I'll, I'll be this guy that I feel that I'm supposed to be. Um, and it wasn't leading me anywhere good, yeah. you know, but the other option to me is to be almost banished or looked at as weak by the industry or by my peers or anything. So it's a kind of a tough it took me a while to kind of get the balls and get confident enough in myself to be like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm just going to do me. Like I, I know I do my work and I know I do the best I can. And, but it, it's a tough place to, I think, especially with social media and all that is once, yeah. once people identify you as something you're expected to stay that way. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah, it makes sense. So when you, when you were growing up, cause you, that, the one thing I remember when we did that interview like 10 years ago, I was like, fuck, he should probably be a formula one driver. Like, I was like, he's way too smart to be a moto dude. But when you, uh, when you were younger and you're like going through like the homeschooling and stuff like yeah. that, is that, uh, is that like a weird thing when you feel like you want to learn like when you really like learning or any really are in that kind you have that headspace was that something that a scratch that got itched for you or <clears throat> well school always came pretty easy to me yeah like I didn't I you know kind of the type that didn't have to like study that hard and I still did pretty good yeah um and I have I can have an obsessive personality a bit I so can, when feel, yeah. you know you <laughs> In, in order to reach the top of the mountain in any sport or really any field, you, you're kind of going to have to sacrifice parts of yourself, if not yeah. most of yourself, to get there. And that was me with, with dirt bikes. Is I, I always enjoyed learning when I was doing it, but it was never my primary focus. Yeah. You know, I was like, you know, we're spending six months a year in a motorhome and I'm with my dad and he's away from my my mom and my sister and I'm, I'm looking at that like, man, I, I better do something. Yeah. Like, like you see all this is happening for you. Like we're going to California, driving across the country for this. How like, old were you when you had those kind of thoughts? You reckon? <clears throat> Probably like 11. Yeah. Okay. 12. So pretty, pretty young. Yeah. It's, when I signed with Pro Circuit in 2009 and we used to, you know, we would spend a lot of time in California. I mean, I remember. Didn't actually, you guys used to like park the motorhome? At the oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I spent three years of my life in the in the parking lot at Pro Circuit, dude. Like That's so wild. Gnarly. So wild. Gnarly. Um, I remember some like the summer of 2004. So I think I was seven years old. I remember we had. We had some hurricanes rolling through Florida, like Florida people remember them, but there was, there was a few consecutively and we, it was in the span of like a week or two, dude. And we just like, we just drove to Alabama to ride. Like there would be days that we'd get in the van and we, you know, I'm from um, a place called Port Orange, kind of like an hour and a half South of Jacksonville on the East coast of Florida. So there's, there's not a lot of tracks around there. So it'd always be a bit of a drive, but sometimes we just get in the car and just drive until it stopped raining and just found somewhere to ride, dude. It was it was next, it was next level. And, you know, my family obviously sacrificed a lot yeah. and looking back, it was, it was way overkill. Like I could have still done yeah, everything yeah, with, yeah, yeah. with less and it probably would have benefited me. But you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And your dad, I don't know. And your dad and didn't know what he yeah, did. No. And yeah. everybody, everybody was just doing what they doing thought. Their best. Yeah, yeah. Doing their best. Yeah. And, yeah. um, you know, everybody had my, my best interest. They were, they were just trying. It's, it's a tough thing to do, you know, and in a way I didn't make it like, yeah, y yeah. Y you know, it's so it comes with some scar tissue, Yeah. but, um, yeah, that, that was pretty, that was difficult on me. It's just realize, I wish I wasn't as like aware, yeah. you know, I, I, and there's probably a lot of kids in your position now that weren't as aware. Yeah. You know, they're and just it, a different mind and a different person, you know? Yeah. I'm like, man, my dad's, you know, my sister's at home. My dad's with me here. I'm like, dude, like this better be worth it. Yeah. You know, I was putting that on myself from such a young age, you know, and that's something I had to learn 
I think everybody kind of has to learn like, um, you know, like how much awareness is self-serving. Like mm. sometimes you're just torturing yourself for no yeah. reason. Right. So you yeah. gotta be able, like people think, you know, people, um, you know, I like to analyze things. I'm aware. And I think people can kind of slap the label as like, I'm an overthinker. Right. Yeah. Well, people don't know I've been dealing with, I've been like this my whole life. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I'm one of the best dirt bike racers in the world. Like I, I have found a way, like I know yeah, when it's yeah. time to stop thinking, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, I wish I knew it sooner. <laughs> Man, it's it's funny. Like, there's a couple things. So, I remember having thoughts in my head like, when I got you know probably 30, 20, 27, 28, You know, when I kind of like real, I look back like I didn't. How old are you now? Thirty five. So I had like a really great upbringing. Like, yeah. parents are still together. Been married thirty one years. Love each other. All our family's Sick. tight. We go on fucking. That's awesome. So it's like we have a good family. But my, in terms of like where I lived, trash. Like so really f- fucked up. So fucked up. And it's like we just my best friend's dad was a fucking meth dealer. Like just the whole no way. The whole I spent my entire life scared of like Damn. getting fucked up yeah like people it, just like a bad situation right and then i when i was a kid though in my head i was like this is so fucked up like why are we here like i don't want to be here i don't want to go to school i like wanted nothing to do with like pretty much anything in my life and then i carried not like resentment but i would i didn't understand why my parents would do that to me you know what i mean like when you're a kid and then you get a bit older and then you you you're an adult with your parents and it's like that's a weird transition to make (laughs) when you go from being a kid i with your parents i always make i always say this and maybe you'll agree with me but i feel like you have to learn to love your parents twice yes so fucking true dude. you know it's it's when you grow kid, up they're, they're your yeah. hero they can do no wrong yeah and then then you get a little bit older and you realize oh man well <laughs> it not everybody's so perfect you know dude, and then I you thought, you kind of you kind of feel it's like finding out santa claus isn't yeah, real yeah and then you have to be like you then you it's there's something wholesome about it you know you learn yeah. to love them again for like the right deeper reasons a hundred percent and can take a, it can take a bit yeah and it was like i i guess i had that realization at some point you know like i'm an adult they're adults and then you just start to see like you understand money you understand this is how much my dad made when i was a kid this is how much my mom made when i was a kid like that's one plus one equals fuck all yeah you know what i mean so it's like there's not that many options. There's not that, that you just start to understand the world. And then you're like, Oh, my dad didn't know that this was about to happen in this area. And my dad, and then I was a kid that was, I was a little asshole of a kid. Yeah. Like I just would, I just I wanted to fight you. people. Like that was my yeah. whole, you know? So it's like, once you start to unpack everything, like you're saying with like the trauma from childhood, yeah, you just realize like, everybody's everyone's just dealing literally with doing the best they can totally you know and like and I, I don't know exactly what it was but i remember like just wanting to give my dad a big hug and be like thanks bro fuck yeah, you did good. you almost you know, feel bad for feel being bad in the for, headspace you yeah, were in for yeah, a while yeah and i feel bad for like what he had to go through yeah in a sense too you know like and then you start to you start to realize like what he gave up and the things that you know he had to work a job he fucking hated his entire life you know, it's like, yeah. I've been the most selfish person on planet earth when it comes to not working a job I like. I do this, you know? Yeah. And it's like my whole life, I have not worked for other people. I've been either poor and working for myself or doing better and working for right. That's it. He you gave know? you this opportunity. He gave you the opportunity. Yeah. And it's so, it's like, yeah, I think it, there's a there's a weird point in life and that's a great way to say, like, love your parents twice. Like twice. I, now I love my parents in such a different way way because like i'm an adult i've got adult problems you just get got, it. yeah and i'm i get it now you know i'm just like fuck you guys were literally doing your best and then once you start to go just back through the generations you know and you just see like the generational shit like my granddad my my granddad's dad killed himself at the dinner table wow what the fuck's that do to yeah. a family like generations down the line you know and it's like and then you see problems in that family and you're just like when you know these things, you're like, what chance did any of you have? Like, it's amazing that you're here. I know. And I think sometimes like the older I've gotten to where you, you kind of have these view of 
like whether it be friends, families, or something that you think's all like perfect. all perfect yeah. or all up here, and then eventually, like as you get older, you just start you start seeing it or you understand it more, and you realize, dude, it's everybody, and that's why I try to never talk about my like I analyze, but I try not to be kind of over dramatic about my problems or whatever. Cause I'm not special, man. Yeah, like we're not special. Everyone, it's the it. same problems across the board, and yeah, yeah I think I'm. Um, like, I guess I'm just stoked that I have a platform where yeah. I feel that, like, I'm okay to be, if you want to call me soft because I'm talking about this, go for it, man. Yeah. But, like, I, I've gotten so many messages and and cool stuff, you know, from podcast, like the podcast and stuff I talk about. It's, um like, I'm just happy that I'm able to kind of, I fail publicly yeah. in front of a bunch of people. Yeah. But I have a choice about how I respond to that. Yeah. And people can see that. And you know, maybe it does something for him. And so I, I guess I'm just excited that my, my problems are, yeah. can be an example for other people. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it's a cool, it's such a cool way to look at it. And when it comes to like being a quote unquote, like deep thinker, I mean, I'm definitely on that. Oh, same. I know. <laughs> we're, we're the same when it comes to that. But when did you start to realize as a kid, like, Oh, I'm fucked up. Like I think about things so weird and so different to just like everybody else. That's a good question. Um, well, you know, it all just feels normal at the time, yeah. right? And then you start to, and then you start to kind of get to know people more, and you realize that you're not thinking the same things as they are. Yeah. I mean, some of the, the some of the things I would think about just in terms of, like I've always been a really compassionate person. You know, like I sometimes like I remember empathetic. Yeah, I remember beating kids at local tracks and like seeing their dads get on them, and I'm like, I'm like like you feeling bad about that like it's just to, to have that level of yeah connection yeah. with someone else at that young when you're just that you, you don't know, even know yeah that kind of stuff so I've always been a compassionate person and I've been um that was t I guess that's the kind of the first was my first real struggle is I like feel like I felt other people's pain mm. and you grow up and you realize not you know it's compassion is not something that's in abundance yeah it's kind of every man for himself and you it's, know so that that's probably like that's probably like nine or ten and it's hard to wear that you know like when you realize that you're a compassionate person or you've got a lot of like built-in empathy and, and then how like, does that fit into a sport where you're supposed to go out there and kill everybody yeah <laughs> for real dude yeah it's just even like everyday life you know like you'd see you, you see some people like the, the way different people react like a stray dog you know like there can be a person where that will like eat that person up right. inside completely yeah and another dude can just walk on by doesn't mean that guy's a bad person it's just like there's just these levels that are built into us that are so different and it's like they play into very different things they do wait i the older i get the more i realize there's like infinitely possible ways to experience what we're experiencing you know you kind of i feel you start to realize that it's really possible for eight billion eight billion people to all be seeing this a different way yeah you know the older you get that's that's been the thing for me and so that that allows me as compassionate i am i've been i've had a tendency to be i'm italian we're pretty um we got a short fuse like i'm yeah. pretty impatient things like that like i can be pretty quick to like get snappy or something right and um, I've, I've kind of used that now where the, like the compassion thing where, where it used to kind of be a struggle for me. Now I'm able to apply that in situations where, you know, some guy's an asshole to me. Right. And I'm, th you know, where you would just, or I would just be like, you know, F him, whatever. I'm able to use that compassion and to do something in good the there, to not yeah, be reactive, yeah. to yeah, be, yeah. you know, to not let it bother me, not let it upset my day you know, to not take things personally. So yeah. I've turned a kind of something that was raw, like a raw skill that, that hindered me. Yeah. I've turned it into something that, that provides me a more, I guess, even keel yeah. type of life where I contribute more in a positive way. Yeah. I think, um, that's another great thing about like a really good partner is yeah. like, so we experience the world in such like a one dimensional way. You know, like I have a lens that I look through 
the world too. Yeah. And it's just full of bias, <laughs> you know, Absolutely. And, and it's all my, bi- like, and there's no way of escaping it. It's a mix between where I was brought up, who my parents are, the DNA, my own, uh, ba- you know, so that's my lens and you only get one. Right. And it's like, I think that that's a really great thing about, you know, a surrounding yourself with good people. But when you've got a really good relationship and you've been with that person for a long time and there's like a compound interest effect it's that deep of that. trust. And then you almost get to see the world differently through that other person. And if you've picked a good person, I mean, most people are good to be honest, but yeah, you no, know, that I really do believe, believe and this is too. something my girlfriend says that, you know, believe people that they're, they're innately good. Yeah. Well, I mean, even further than that, people no one thinks they're evil right. no one thinks like let's go to hitler arguably yeah. he's the go-to guy for the most evil person on the planet he would not have thought he was evil he was wrong about that very wrong but in his own head in his own experience with all of his personal biases with all of his he was not wrong in in his, his own mind, head, you know yeah. what i mean so it's like i think that when you can have that perspective and i think for me when i was younger i would just think about experience in general all the time like i'm having it was now that when once i started like quote unquote meditating i yeah. guess you can kind of yeah, you're yeah. like oh i was always doing a version of this in weird ways yep. but i was just completely in awe of like i know that i know this thing or like I know that I'm having an experience like this is this is quite weird about being a human I remember being like a kid really? having like real young like seven six seven eight and I think it's because I went to like a Catholic school and then okay. they start making you read the Bible about right. creation and all yeah. that sort of shit so I just started to have those deep questions it made me think <laughs> but everyone is having their own experience it's completely unique to them and a lot of people if you ask every single person on the street you say, are you a good person? Everyone would say yes. Yeah, I think that's one thing where you talk about, I've always, not always, or, you know, I think the early part of my life was, I was really bothered by what people said about me or, you know, I lived and died by it. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, something I've learned to do th- through understanding, like having a broader perspective, understanding that everybody's dealing with stuff, everybody views it differently. It's allowed me it relates back to confidence for me to do the things that I want to do because I, it, you know, kind of learned it. You learn to not take it personally, you know, like it's, they don't know what they're doing. Like when, you know, when you're, you post something or somebody comes up to you and bashes you about like, it's not about you, man. Yeah. yeah, Like it's never, it's never about you. Yeah. It is never about you. Like when they say world's a mirror, right? Like it's, and so that's how, like, when I see something and I'm a human being, and so I, it'll make me be like, it'll make well, you yeah, feel a type F, of way, you know? Yeah. yeah. Make you feel a type of way. But then I just, then I just notice, I'm like, it's just not, that's not, that's yeah. not my problem. You yeah. know, that's, I'm just, I'm just there for them right now. Like I even look at it, I kind of look at it for, and this is maybe a little bit weird, but I can't, even even the bad stuff, I, I feel like I'm providing a service like yeah. to society. Like it's, I feel that it's part of my purpose is yeah. even if it has to be bad, like even if I have to be the recipient of somebody's negative energy or whatever, yeah, it's like yeah. I'm kind of contributing to to the good like, in some yeah, way. Yeah, good in some way. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I kind of just like, I'll just get this little smile on my face and just keep her moving that's a pretty good way to look at it so when you when you kind of got to that point where you're like damn i need to change some shit like yeah. this this ain't really working what were the resources like what's your first port of call because i think that's probably the hardest not maybe not the hardest thing but it's like that step one like what do where do i go what what do i do and it's like there's a million amazing books like you get the yeah, wake books. like there's like you get waking up you just do that every yeah. day your life will change oh man like, it's can, you know it's crazy it's but where do you go from day one on that you know where did i go from day one i isolated myself from everyone okay. basically what point was this what's the timeline because this shit takes years yeah this is um this is 2021 yeah 
July of 2021 where I had my my arm obviously was a problem and I, I did like half outdoors and I got surgery yeah then I moved out here full time and I was I didn't have any like I've always had all this awareness and all this knowledge and you really like you know you know how it is to be to be young and think that way it's really just a bunch of information yeah, in your yeah, head. yeah you're yeah, not really yeah, using yeah, any yeah, you're not yeah. really doing anything yeah yeah like knowing shit isn't wisdom it's not and it's yeah. not action either yeah and I didn't know you know I didn't know why I was this is all I've ever wanted I'd never thought about anything else in my life <laughs> like literally if you would have asked me then I would say well I, my plan was just to to race dirt bikes until reach the top of the mountain race dirt bikes until i'm 30 and then don't do you know don't do anything the rest of your life yeah. you realize when you get a little bit older like you that's you're not going to be stoked on that like yeah. you're going to have to have something else yeah. purpose relationships community all these things and i didn't know i felt that i was so because i've always been i've always been all in on this yeah. you know i wasn't worried about friends like i didn't go to disneyland for my and cousin's birthday worked. and the plan worked it did but it wasn't enough. Like I, I needed, I needed to find more balance. And, but what I did initially is I just ran it. I just ran from everything. Like I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know why it didn't make sense to me. Like I was, I was like, I have everything that I want. There's, mm. there's no reason I should be this way. So I kind of, I guess I kind of walled in self pity for, for a little bit there, you know, just dealing with the hand stuff too. It's like, I've finally got to this place where I can, uh, I got all this speed and all these things I can do and it's like I'm dealing with this and kind of just felt sorry for myself and yeah that but that's always been me is like I just isolate and just stop talking to people like stop calling my mom back like stop calling my sister stop calling my dad you know um, if I had a girlfriend she's gone like yeah, every she just gone. she gone like yeah. it's just yeah that's what I did and it took me it took me a while to kind of in a way, I'm glad I tore my ACL at the start of 2022, because yeah. if I would have kept going on, like, say, racing started to go well for me and that was just, you know, just a distraction. Yeah. Yeah. And it then just, you probably like, let's say you cut everyone off, stop taking the phone calls and then you start doing good. <laughs> that's probably it's bad. That's probably bad. It's bad. So know? it's. Yeah, you kind of have to take I take a second now when something I feel like doesn't work out for me. Like I look back so many things and maybe it's oversaid, but so many things that I didn't think were working out. It's like if it didn't happen, I have no idea where I'd be, man. Yeah. Like where I'm at right now, I know I'm not, you know, I didn't go, I didn't just go 22 and 0 and I'm not like, um, you know, there's not all this hype and like mm. all this money getting thrown at me, all these opportunities. And, but I like for the first time in my life besides just being a child and really not knowing anything. Yeah. Like I'm enjoying my life. Like I'm engaged with my life. That was the thing for me that was always hard. Like mm. I would always have like a one bedroom apartment with like a mattress on the floor. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't settle down anywhere because it was, it was just never going to be enough. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's why it's like, I can go to the races now. I can like at Bud's Creek, I led laps. I, I rode probably the best I did yeah, all year. That way, but 25 minute mark, like this thing acted up and I, I went backwards, right? And I, I came back to the trailer and I freaked out. Like I had to apologize to my mechanic. It was, I lost my mind. Shout out to Justin, the man. So that was react. <laughs> yeah, right? Justin Shanty is he's awesome, man. He's awesome. Um, so that was reactive. So it, I, what I'm trying to say is like I care yeah. a lot about how I do and I care a lot about my work. It's, I think sometimes with all this perspective talk, yeah, you can kind of, can, you can kind of yeah, be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, do you really, like, are you really about this? Yeah, so you're this? not in it anymore. And it, it's yeah. like, I am. Yeah. Like, I, but I'm able to kind of separate, it's not completely me anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I can turn it, I can, and it's because of all these things that have happened. And it's just, dude, it's just so nice to be able to show up to the race and just enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. I can still say that sucked. You got to be better. Like I'll see you Monday at six AM to but there's like work a, on it. There's but a utility. Yeah, there's something there yeah. that says, No, like yeah. it stops here. It doesn't yeah. get it doesn't yeah. get that deep. And yeah, that's something I, I can't stress enough to people is like if you see me happy, if you see me happy at the at the end of a race where I didn't do so well, that doesn't mean I don't care. What that actually means is I care enough to where I had to figure all this stuff out so it can be sustainable because yeah. what are you going to do after you after you 
you know, after you fuck up and, you know, you don't perform well before it would take me like three days to leave my room, yeah. you know, that that doesn't help anyone. Dude, I, I see that in Christian Craig and that's kind of like I started talking to him a little bit at the podcast about it yeah. is like he and fucking love the dude. Oh, he's awesome, awesome guy. Awesome yeah, wife, super awesome nice. family, yeah, awesome the family. man. This is no shade at all. No. But it's like, I could see that in him. You know, it's like he gets on the 450. He's just won a lights title. And it's like, he gets so pissed at himself visibly. And to me, I look at that. I'm like, dude, I get it. You don't have to prove to me that you're pissed off that you got 10th. You know, it's like, and now drop it because there's now like a point of diminishing returns it's like the function that he's after is like telling letting people know that i'm not okay with this result well that's in that and and that's on the culture too yeah like you feel that you have to be i mean there's a lot of team there's a lot of team on like team owners managers whatever that they want to see that like they want to see you Mm. miserable like that's you have to care that much about it and it's so toxic, man. But I mean, I think you just get trapped there. Yeah. Like you just get trapped there. You feel like, you feel like that's what, you know, that's why it's just kind of the same recycled thing over and over again. Like it's, it's just, it's just not healthy. It doesn't make sense on a scale of there's 40 dudes on the gate. So what? 37 of them have to be pissed for a week. (laughs) like that's that's the culture you know and it's like you get into it's one of the things i love about f1 is like you get points if you're if you're one of the back marker teams or you're like you're not the guy like everyone knows max verstappen's gonna win the race right so then it's like if you're esteban ocon and you get on the podium holy shit bro like you're a don or if you're danny rick and you finish ahead of yuki snowda in your foot like you're the don you know it's like we have these other i guess like benchmarks or like litman's test of like what success means in other sports but in our sport it's like you either win or you fucking suck go home and do five 40 minute motos tomorrow and like i don't want to hear about it until you win again it's like okay well i mean it's crazy because it's it's like the the riders themselves are not really empowered like all the riders are walking on eggshells mm. you know like it's it's weird. It, you feel like you have to be this way because it's all, you know, because RC was this way or this or, you know, Rick Johnson was this way or it, it's just it's weird. It, it This sport has a way of kind of like sucking the individuality like out of you mm. in, in a way. It's because you feel like you have to be this way and this is the only way that you're going to be accepted. Yeah. And that's been a struggle for me because it's like if I'm not myself, then what am I even doing? I'm like, I'm that guy. Yeah. Like, what am yeah. I even doing here? Yeah. You know, so. Luckily, I've been able to do well enough where that hasn't really got me in trouble. But there's times I've felt heat for kind of just being myself and being how I am. Like it's kind of start to feel like an outsider a little bit, you know, like people start looking at you a little differently. And um, I actually had the Moto Combine thing. They had it read, but I I talked to those. I talked. They had me speak to the kids for a bit. Um, And I told them, I I always stress to to them, it's like, be yourself. Like, that's the the most valuable thing Mm. that you can bring to the sport is you, uniquely you. Like, you, everybody's got to go on bike rides. Like, we all got to do that. We (laughs) all got to go to the gym. We all got to ride, right? But don't make that your identity. Yeah, and just do it your way and and be yourself. Like, you talk about, we always talk about what can we do to make the sport grow. It's like, Everybody, I mean, you know, we have Barsh has got his thing, kind of Webb's got his thing. There, there's some different, you know, Jason, Kenny, like we all have our, our like the top, top guys have their kind of their little things, but yeah. it's, it's, it's really contained. Yeah. You know, and you everybody's have to do so good, so good to have so any credibility yeah. to say, yeah. to do anything different. You yeah. know, I was like, I was just naturally kind of like eh, about my podcast because it's like I, I didn't like I'm not winning. Yeah. You know, like so so I'm doing a podcast now and I'm not winning. So yeah. that just must mean I don't give a shit. You know, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. like so weird that yeah. it's so weird that you can think that, but there's just something about the sport that yeah. I just think it's it's not really worth getting 
riled up over because I think it's just a generational thing. I think and it's I just think it'll slowly, just naturally, yeah. just like everything. I think it is, man. Like I've been doing the podcast five years, and, and you've had like, a, and I will say you have had a great impact on like people being more open and, and talking about these things and. Like I see like your fans on your post. I always I watch all your videos and like everybody's super stoked on it. So I want you to know I'm proud of you. Oh, I appreciate that, bro. Um, no, thank you. But yeah, I mean, I, I do think I mean, it's been one of my goals throughout this is like I take realistically zero money from the industry, like completely self-funded. Right. You know, like there's, a, there's a, a few things here and there, but I'm not owned by anybody. No one can tell me I can't say this, I can't do it, like, because the way that they do that is through money. And I think that I specifically did that for as long as I've done it because I think now, no matter what, no matter if, like, Yamaha fucking starts giving us sponsorship or whatever, we've earned the right to keep it this platform because it's one of the things that I feel most proud about is that it's a space like a Jason Anderson. Like he just doesn't do shit. He doesn't do interviews. He doesn't do, yeah. he doesn't like it. There's nothing that's for him that he feels like he can express himself. And it's like to have a guy like him come on the podcast and say all of the shit that he wanted to say and get fully celebrated for it. Have Cooper Sick. be able to say, yeah, what, that was a good one, you know, and he got celebrated for that shit. So I think that, you know, even in the five years that I've been doing it, there has been a change. And I think for you, sure. by you doing what you're doing, like you're the perfect dude to have a podcast about anything and everything. I fucking listen to it. I love it. A ton Thank of other you. people do too. You know what I mean? So it's like, I think over time, the culture starts to change, but it's just, it's not a it's instant a, fix. Yeah, you know? It's hard to have, it's really hard in, most of the time it comes late in people's career when they're established and they've yeah. done, yeah. they feel like they're there, they've made their money, all that. That's when you start to see the real individual, like the, the individual, yeah. 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 you know, and I guess my hope would be that we start to see it like, in these, yeah, yeah, like in these 250, like 250 kids coming in, like have their own, yeah. have their own thing. But it, it's hard to have the, you know, when you, like I, t- like we talked about earlier, like when you're in this box, yeah. it's hard to have the courage to. And most of the time, you just think you are that for a long time. You know, you yeah. start, obviously, as you grow up, you start to realize, ah, oh, well, this is kind of, this is why I'm this way because I'm, you know, you start to kind of figure more stuff about yourself too. But yeah, yeah, I, I think you're right. It's coming, it's coming a long way and it's coming pretty quickly. I think too, something that I want to add on this, if I can selfishly, is that since I've been back here, I, I definitely, like the sport, gets criticism you know yeah like mx sports felt whatever so well, i've been it, i've it, been around a little bit i've been the whole time i was away i was in communication with people but it's different when you're like here on the ground yeah. right but it's like i think there's a narrative that they don't give a fuck and that they just want money and that yeah. bro i went to loretta's right if mx sports oh. is making a killing off loretta's fucking have it <laughs> David Coombs is out there at 4 a.m. pounding bro, steaks. You could not pay me a million dollars to run that event. It's a lot. If that's what they make for that event, good on you, dude. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like, it is borderline impossible to do it. And it's like, you could point out all this shit that wasn't good, they could right. do better, blah, blah, blah. But it's the same thing really in every, I mean, is you there not say the same thing about the podcast? Yeah. And, you know? and is there not, is there a sport that you can think of? Like I, I follow cycling really closely. Every race, there's a problem. That's with pretty some, perfect. I think. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, like, like, it. But it's like the, I don't know. I was watching Rimco Evan pull the team, t- uh, the team time trial, um, the Volta España and like the, they finish in the dark, you know? So it, it it's like, UCI is their governing yeah. body. Like there's yeah. always talk like the UCI, UCI, UCI. The UCI. Yeah. Yeah. So I, everybody's always got a problem with Adam Silver and the NBA. There's it, people just need something to be mad at, really. That's true. But you, you're right in bringing that up because they they do. It wouldn't be possible without them, you know. And I'm, I'll be the first one to say that, like I believe that we can make some positive changes. I completely agree. From you know, yeah. but at the same time, you you also have to recognize one. It's it's really difficult. Yeah, you know, super and, difficult. And, and they're doing a really good job. There's always improvements to be made. But I just think that people have like a 
perceived malice that just isn't there. You know, like people literally think that like Davy Coombs hates motocross yeah. and Some wants evil, the sport Dr. to evil. die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is just lining that his pockets pure motocross, full dude. of cash, you know. Dude, he was at Loretta's picking up bikes on the start line that got, you yeah. know. They, I had him on my podcast. Start, yeah, yeah was that, that was really good actually. Yeah. But I guess my point being is that it's like, you know, as the sport's changing, the athletes are getting more accepted or more whatever. They've got their own freedom, but it's like, we can chip away at the sport in general getting better you know right. like just let's through. look at it collectively yeah. as not a yeah. us versus them yeah i and, think is and, the big thing yeah and then i think like i made some points at wash google about the press conferences i was like a big thing for me is like i think we leave so much on the table right. in the sport yeah like i would actually i would really like to see um way more effort be put there and then, so I just literally said that to the to the guys at Washugo. I was like, hey, I fucking love these. We should do way more. We should put more into it. If there's anything I can do, let me know. If you want any help with titles Collaborate. and thumbnails. And like, I'll do your thumbnails for it. Like, I'll help with what will get views in the YouTube shit, you know. Because little things like, like that add a lot of credibility. Dude, and there's, uh, I'm trying to think of how to say this. Like, I've, I'm an expert at YouTube now. Yeah those guys aren't experts at you like so no matter how many fucking races that you run you can have the best motocross series in the world but if you're not a youtube guy or you don't have someone that know like is an expert in that game then you're not going to get expert level results you know right so it's just purely the conversation i had and they're like oh we've got these challenges this challenge and i'm like okay fair enough like that's quite a valid bit of pushback here's how i would overcome this or can i help with this can i do this and it's like so i just think this whole narrative needs to change and, and once ever the narrative towards the writers i think that's starting to change but then it's like just all around it's like if we can be a little bit more positive and if we can think as a group think as a team we all are here because we love it man for sure like nobody nobody goes into dirt bike racing really to make money no. Right? It's a passion project. There's people for that all of do. Us. Yeah, of course. But and it turns out that way. Yeah, but there's luck and there's but go, climbing yeah, and go, there's... Go watch my podcast with Davey Coombs and tell him he doesn't love dirt bikes. Dude. I mean, the guy's got story after story. You can feel the passion when you're in a room with him. Yeah. You know, I think in any time you do... Like, I had a conversation with them. I had a conversation with them. Uh, um, somebody posted, like, the payout for, uh, for outdoors. And I posted on my story with a laughy face, like, come on, like this. But... I had a conversation with with Davey uh, like kind of about that and you learn a lot of things that you kind of just mm-hmm. a lot of people are assuming a lot about and and I think just the general complaints it's most of the time people just don't understand like you just don't understand you don't yeah. have the scope of the work or what requires so it's just a it's just an easy conclusion yeah but people are always gonna be mad at some yeah yeah so and I, I think yeah we're we're just we're trending in such a Agreed. good direction it's, across it's the board insane yeah and with i mean jet dude like he's in deegan like i remember the maybe the most impressive thing i've seen all year was i think it was houston supercross and i was watching Japan. i was watching uh the 250 main it might have been even the heat race anyway hayden was in like seventh or eighth but he was coming through and passing dudes and the the stadium followed him oh bro around the entire track it made me it almost damn near brought a tear to my eye like to see just what that kid is bringing and obviously you can talk about jet and all his his stuff too but do we have so many things in the sport that are going in a great direction so yeah. i i definitely don't think it's time to hit a panic button like we need to do something yeah and i just do don't think it's else. time to like complain no and carry on it's never know? time to complain <laughs> you know what i mean once like, you make the decision to start complaining it's hard to stop i've been there yeah that's true uh i mean dude talking about hayden and jet and the whole phenomena that we're dealing with like so went to wash Eagle, finally like got to meet hayden actually and yeah. super nice kid like actually the fucking nicest yeah yeah he's he is and uh and brian i love brian i got a lot of time for him he's done a lot of good shit for me uh got to meet those guys and and hang and in person kind of just shadow bro fucking hectic i don't know if you've been by the truck no i i have heard that it's like a big deal 
out of control. Never seen anything like it. Really? Never seen anything like it. And like sport in general. Like, no way. L- kids I really haven't seen it. Fucking losing it. It's worth going to the pits. I got to check it out. Yeah, it's honestly SMX. Just go and just go. I might come over there with a Sharpie. Bro, they were screaming. Like literally, Hayden's in the truck, right? And it's, I think it was maybe after quality or one of the practices. So I'm at the truck. I'm talking to Duff. We can't even talk, man. Me and his mechanic. Because the kids are literally screaming, Hayden, Hayden. Like losing it. And then someone just starts a chant. Hayden, Hayden, Hayden. It was so loud, dude. It's like some... Like, literally... Rock star Bieber stuff. shit, man. Yeah. Like, literally Bieber shit. And then it went on for probably, like, 30 seconds, and then he finally came out of the truck. Like, he literally had to come out of the truck because of the people that were screaming his name. That's awesome. I had never seen anything like it. Not at a dirt bike race. I do understand what you're saying with the... Sometimes there is just, a, like, a general negative tone to things. You see stuff like that, and you're like... And we're only going up like oh. this sport in 20 years. Yeah. You know, we always talk, you know, tracks getting shut down because of land, you know, noise, stuff like that. But I, don't I know, think I, we're good. Yeah. I think we're fine, dude. It's just, it's captivating. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of Hayden's overall performance this year? As someone that's been in his shoes is probably <clears> the most <throat> hyped amateur. Like he's probably the most hyped amateur since you. Would yeah. you think anyone else? I don't know. I don't pay really. I didn't, I don't really pay attention. Um, Come on, man. You should you should have known that you would have I mean, died. I, <laughs> he no, took that's, a whole, that. that's a whole that's a whole other story. Dude. <laughs> yeah. I thought I sucked to be honest with you. Uh, um, no, I I think he like I watched him ride Loretta's last year, and like he was there was obviously a lot of hype. He's got a they've done a great job with his brand, the YouTube thing, everything. So I think the natural thing to think at first is you don't really like you got you need to see it to believe it and when i saw him ride i'm like this guy is going to be a good pro but i didn't imagine that he would do what he did this year and like be a championship contender and be the the, the crazy thing was how consistent he was oh yeah you know he's Soupy as well uh, that what the kids say now is they got he's got the dog in him <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. he's to be that to be that consistent and to kind of have that racing mind. So young kind of reminds me of, I, I said this in around Daytona time, I think, but kind of reminds me of Cooper when, yeah. when he was a 250 guy. Like you just feel when you're watching him ride, like he's in control of the race, yeah. you know, and that more than the speed or when, anything else, that to me is the biggest sign of like, oh, this guy's going to be really, really good. Because yeah. if he already has it that figured out, and like you said, he's dealing with people screaming outside his rig nonstop and it's like one big posse and it's all this stuff happening and he's able to still have a quiet mind and and like have his priorities straight and do what he does. I mean, that that takes a besides just being a talented racer, it takes like a talented almost mind mm-hmm. like you have to really get it like pretty young you know and maybe he kind of fell into that by accident maybe something he's kind of trained within himself but yeah. it looks natural to me you know he's got that it's like it typically when you see kind of how much pressure he kind of bring you bring all that hype and it's like he's unaware of it you know yeah. he rides like he's unaware of it. he rides light and free and like he doesn't have the like it's like it's any other race you yeah. know like it doesn't really matter that much and that that normally is more somebody that's maybe a little bit like less intelligent you would think yeah but then you see all these other traits is race craft and um like just how he controls the race and when he you know he knows when to chill and he's showing up every week and podium in the championship hut at 17 and but then you're like oh this guy knows how to turn it off like he can just be like he knows it's there sometimes you i think you can be quick to jump to oh he's just unaware like he's just blissfully unaware you know like he's yeah, just a young kid yeah, like yeah, all yeah, young yeah. kids it's I, not don't, a, it's, I don't think it's, that. It, yeah no it yeah. well you you can't when you watch him like throughout yeah. the year so to have that ability to to kind of just shut the noise off and do that i mean it's kind of what he can accomplish is pretty much limitless because he's he's helping himself not hurting himself and he, obviously he's got talent for days so yeah. it's going to be exciting i always hey, it's so cool to watch guys develop like that you know when i went pro that kid was on like a 50 and now <laughs> he's winning so outdoor wild, nationals man. it's wild <laughs> even like rider d 
Yeah. He was he won the four or six class as a five year old my my last year of uh at Loretta's and That's you know, crazy. now he's now he's riding with me at Glen Helen on Thursdays, you know, and <laughs> showing up and crushing it at the races and you're just like, dude, how did I Father Time I've stops here, the no I've man? I've been here ten years. Yeah. It's wild. Dude, it, it is it's crazy. exciting though for me. I don't look at it as like uh maybe at one point in my life I you know, I did like maybe look at it in a bit of a negative light but to me it's just it's like it's so fun to watch like kids develop you know i've been watching guys like Ryder d i i, I pay attention and mm. been watching those guys for a long time and you see them and coming and doing it and you're like i don't know it's exciting yeah i think the the thing with hayden too is like he's obviously like the i think the podium speeches are unbelievable yeah oh, oh yeah. he lets it out man but he's quick with it yeah like because so there's the i get the like so the criticism has been oh he's just doing what his dad says to him uh, like he's just oh, saying really? what his dad says like that's what people are saying right that his dad can't be out there on the bike with him man that that's true but i think as well like well just meaning i mean that in a good way like yeah, obviously yeah he's doing yeah it. yeah but so it's not scripted what jason thomas says to him though you know what i mean so it's like you could yeah. you could have a plan in your head of like what daddy said i should I say don't, i don't get that vibe either. i don't either yeah i think it's an it's a lazy conclusion yeah. to jump to yeah because he's got the you know obviously brian knows what he's doing he's a marketing genius clearly yeah i mean look at what he's done with the you just the whole brand of the family's awesome like everybody knows the deacons they're, yeah. they're sweet you know it's it would be it's just a lazy conclusion to jump to oh he's just a puppet or just yeah. anything but yeah. if you're around him and you see him and you know what i know and you watch him ride and it's obvious that it's not that yeah. you know he's not he's just straight up not scared he doesn't no, always like a, say the right thing either yeah, yeah you know yeah, he yeah. just yeah. says what he wants to say which is yeah is i think it's awesome even if it's a little rough around the edges sometimes for Fuck, people good. like dude that's better that's what we you know that's supposedly what we want that's what everybody wants it's just unfiltered it's yeah. cool yeah so yeah it's i i just think he's just ticking a lot of the boxes oh. you know and like even uh after washugal I went back to the truck after the motos and he just walked, I was talking to Brian and he just walked out the truck and he's like, welcome back to America, son. I just gave you the full treatment. And it's like, that's yeah. quick. You know, oh, like, yeah. like yeah, that's, yeah. that's what, that's what you're getting on the podium. Totally. You know, no one, t no one said, say it like, he's a quick gnarly dude. That's got that confidence. He's got that swag, you know? And he's like, yeah. he's in that zone. Like that is his, he's in his hot girl era right now and it's like there's a certain yeah, girl, yeah. there's a certain vibe that you put out when you're yeah you know when you're in that and it's like hey, he's got that he's got that it. like magnetic thing about him you know yeah. yeah and it's like what you were saying before about i wish lights guys could have that same freedom that a guy like you has earned dude one season i think he's earned it. no he has one season that's all it took him well it doesn't even it doesn't really come from outside either it's mm. like you can never really earn it from that way it's it's to yourself like for me i had to do this this and this and then okay well i can have some freedom to do uh you know do some things that i want to do like i like that was almost in like i was i was kind of putting it blame elsewhere like from the outside but really that's a me it was thing the, yeah it's a me yeah, thing man yeah yeah and he's just like what what are you talking about like i'm just gonna do what i want like, yeah you know nobody's ever like the guy is it's 115 degrees and he's like doing his fastest lap time on this last lap of the second moto but he posts a youtube video like twice a day you know was he distracted <laughs> you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. And he's just like yeah fuck you guys like <laughs> which is awesome it's you need more people like that it, it gives like that's when these things like you said christian like can't have his podcast anymore yeah. it's like because of kids like him 10 10 years from now that's not a conversation that's going to happen yeah. like people have to prove that wrong yeah you know and not a lot not enough people have proved that wrong yeah but it's just because we're so scared to break outside the box because we have one chance to do this and there's like 10 factory seats you know and you're really just not trying to piss anybody off yeah but he's so good that he can piss as many people off as he wants yeah he's still gonna do whatever yeah you know yeah. and be on the best bike well and dude i mean it seems like every weekend too not to make it a hayden deegan podcast no, but no, it's no, like no. he's just giving us a highlight it, like he wasn't on the broadcast at all this weekend all of the social media has just been blowing him. up just him how about when how about when he crashed uh with something with the red flag 
at oh. Bud's Creek. That was a big one, right? Like the like the AMA did it on purpose or something. Oh yeah, I didn't get into that rabbit hole. Yeah, I actually anyway. think they need to change that though. Like they they should do something. I think different it should there. have been staggered or something. Yeah. It has to. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they can't. That was a weird one. It. So I want to go back a bit. Yeah, because we had a mad tangent. Loved every yeah, second yeah. of it. Loved every Show, second well, of the, it. The, the Deegan fan base is massive on YouTube, so we definitely our we numbers have to touch that subject. Yeah, we just went. Can you say something kind of fucked up about him that I can take out of context? No, Come yeah, on, please. just give me something. That's the thing. I was driving here and I'm like, man, I hope I don't get off anything. Like oh. when we were talking about when we we're talking about like introspective stuff or I hate coming across like like having a victim mentality in mm. any way. So yeah. when I when I talk about when I when I am introspective and I talk about some challenging times of my life or whatever, I never want that to be taken out of context. So yeah. you always find me say like look, I'm I know I live I'm a privileged yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. I know <laughs> like I'm really lucky, but this happened. Yeah. You know, so well, I have no control over the titles that will come out of this because uh my boy Griff, he does all of really? it. Really? He's a fucking savage. So yeah, I t- I haven't I haven't incriminated myself too much. Nah, Should be you've fine. Been pretty good uh dino dino messaged me like oh it was like a few weeks ago and, and dude to be honest i don't even watch anything these days yeah i don't watch any that's of how it short. is i do I, the same now it's just like bro I'm, this is literally my job yeah. like i'm so disconnected from it well and you're just confident in yourself now but i feel like when i like the first couple of podcasts i did i listened to them back because i'm like i don't know does it sound okay you know and i think just as you get more confident in the skills in your own skill set you're like I did my best. I don't even need to, not, like, I, you know, I don't need to check that box. Dude, I'm, I'm even at the point now where, like, I know I said something that I wish that I would, that if it was me editing, I would 100% take out. Yeah. But I'm, like, I'm at the point now where I just don't even, I don't even bother going back and finding it. I don't send Griff the the marks in to out really i'm just like just run it fuck it run it whatever gets the views i sound like a dickhead but i just don't care that's a great place to be i just want to go how much more peace comes with that and you know what and it means i can go right instead of sitting at home and fucking typing into slack can you take this it's just like bro. i I honestly it just is what it is but yeah dino texted me like i was probably a month ago more like a short went up on youtube and it was blowing up and it was like something about Dean Party, and he's like, "Bro, can you please change that title to something no a, way. Bit, a bit more sweet?" And I'm like, "Dude, sorry. Like, can you send me the link? I don't even know what. Like, I honestly don't know what you're talking about." And then he sends me the thing, so I had to send Griff a message. I was like, "Hey, can we back this one day?" He's like, "All right, sorry, but I inc- I encourage them. I'm like, get the views." like do yeah. it and i think our fan people, base knows now yeah. that it's like it's just the title like you have to watch the video i'm giving you this title so you watch it but you will see the context when you watch and this people assume no matter what so that's like when i talk True. about like watching my like i would go through my old vlogs that i was editing things like that i try to leave i try to leave no room for anybody assuming anything but you can't you can't no like in once and once you kind of let that go it's like a mass. It's like you feel like you're just flying, man. Like, yeah, it is what it is. Some people like we're going to put this out and there's some people that are going to be like, oh, man, he's ungrateful or whatever. But it's just it it doesn't affect my life at all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No. And, and you're right. It is a good place to be because, yeah, at this at the start, like, I mean, that's what that's what brought on my whole. I just had like a huge shift in my life for the better. And it came through doing this, you know, like it just yeah. forced me to look at myself in such a a way that like not many people will ever go through the experience of like oh you have over a million individual people that listen to you talk for nine hours a week yeah like that's a very weird experience and for an, an average a great person one too. like but i'm a normal person yeah you know like you've known me for 15 years almost yep. and it's like i'm a very like i didn't come from at no point was I ever trying to get famous. At no point was, you know, there wasn't ever a thing. This just right. ended up. You're just doing it ended what up you want to do, yeah. Know? But it's like that experience is what led me. I went, had to go through such a fucking deep, dark hole, which was, it was a great experience, but it's like to come out on the other side to genuinely not care now. I, you think, know? I think like what you just said resonates. I think that's why people have a tough time really caring like really giving a shit about something Mm. because it takes it takes a lot and it's going to take a lot 
and it's gonna not feel good it's not gonna be mm. comfortable sometimes you know yeah, i yeah. think love is pain type yeah of deal. i think we're scared of i've just seen it with some of the people that i'm around like we're just scared of of caring about something that much because it's it's going to be a roller coaster ride and it's yeah, going to like yeah, you yeah. you've found out so much stuff about yourself and really looked at yourself in the mirror and there's been some nights you've been standing up the ceiling like i don't know i don't know about this you know that's that's a tough challenge to take on like life's hard anyway and some people are just like yeah i'd rather not you and i were like bring it the fuck on like <laughs> we'll yeah. suffer through it like we yeah. just can't leave it alone yeah eventually yeah eventually but it's that such point. a rewarding experience mm. yeah like, did you did you see style bender's interview when he won his last fight did no you, i'm not i, you know, I really UFC stuff? i'm just not a big um dude i wish i wish the tv and shit we could play this clip he he gets on the mic after he just so i'll lay out the full spectrum because it speaks exactly to what you're saying so he underfit well he was undefeated middleweight champion of the world he was like the man kickboxer got into the ufc he's like on his fifth title defense gets knocked out by the only dude that ever beat him in kickboxing this dude beat him twice in kickboxing so the only guy that's ever beat this dude is alex pierre and he's like this big brazilian like literally amazon fucking dude right and so he beats him twice in kickboxing gets his makes his way to the title knocks izzy out his first ever loss in MMA, loses the title in front of everybody, takes an immediate rematch. And I'm like the biggest Israeli Desanya fan of all time. No way. And I'm like, oh, bro, fuck, please don't. Like, because if, if this is it, you're done. If you lose this fight, yeah, it's over. if you get knocked out again, see ya. You can't go up. You can't go down. You're done. Like, this is legacy shit and it's over. I have never been so fucking nervous and scared for a fight in my life, right? Round one, Dink knocks this dude out. No. Crazy, bro. And he gets on the mic at the end of it. And he just, he literally takes the mic from Rogan. And I got goosebumps now, but he's like, I hope all of you can feel this level of joy one time in your life. Oh, I hope, man. I hope that everyone in this stadium feels this way at least one time in their life but guess what to feel this way you are gonna have to go through fucking hell you are gonna have to take on something so big so great so, like it was dude i gotta it, watch this oh bro i got goosebumps about it you know and it's like that's what you're saying like to be something to be anything above it's gonna normal, be uncomfortable you have to be you know it's like you can't expect abnormal results by being normal you know and it's like for what you do for what i for what anyone on any level that's like achieving something like dude you've got to put yourself through the ringer yeah you do and man do i know it like <laughs> i know it but it's like i mean like he said and like you know it's once you get to the other side and once you keep going and I made a decision a long time ago. Like, I'm not going to stop. Like, I'm not, yeah. it, not in terms of, not in terms of like quitting dirt bikes or anything, but just in terms of like, I'm never going to, I'm never going to sit, I'm never going to sit and wallow and be, yeah, and play the victim. Like, my life's so hard or anything, right? Yeah. Like, I, I have a very, obviously I'm aware, but I, I feel like, I'm genuinely really grateful for everything that's happened in my yeah. life. And it, it hasn't been the plan. Yeah. Like my plan was to be Ricky Carmichael. That was it. And I could <laughs> yeah, never yeah. imagine, I could never Not imagine, being that guy. I could never imagine. Like I did, if you would have asked me, um, you know, when I was 10 years old, like, I don't know how I would have survived like with that, you know, but just because it's not going to plan doesn't mean it's not going to plan. I yeah, guess, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I, like I told you, man. Like, and like you talked about with the podcast with Christian. I mean, some of the things that have happened to me have had to. Yeah. Have had to, and I think once you kind of shift the view of like mm. the suffering, you unlock this new, like you unlock a whole new perspective on your on your entire life. Yeah. You know, and yeah it just this is so much more rewarding of a feeling than so mm. I, if i would have won everything yeah if i would have been eli or rc or anything i still like I, yeah i would probably be in a you bigger house to go through this I, I would probably yeah. be in a bigger house and yeah. i'd probably be closer to the beach and i don't like i don't know what i would have right i would have more material things and be more comfortable but 
that empty feeling was waiting for me at the end of that rainbow. Yeah, no matter like, what. Like, no matter what. Yeah. It wasn't going to, like, an extra $20 million isn't going to do anything different for me in my life. Mm-hmm. And, and so I look at, you know, I think sometimes, like, like we talk about, you know, social media and, and how you kind of show the best parts of your life and everybody's like trying to look like they're crushing it mm-hmm. all the time. And that's kind of feel like you feel like struggling is weakness and mm-hmm. it's, we're all struggling and we all, it's like we all fake it to everybody else because if it's kind of like, if you admit to struggling, it's, you almost feel like you're failing or mm-hmm. something, but it's, it's a part of it. And there's meaning in that. Yeah. There's so much meaning in that. And that's what I found. It's just, it's given me just a, it's given me an opportunity to actually enjoy yeah, like, you can what I'm such doing a different place. and like be close to people and value others in my relationships and, and just how it set me up for the rest of my life. Like mm-hmm. it hasn't gone perfect. Like I, you know, I wish I would have won more so far, but in a way it has gone perfect. So perfect, man. Like I wish people could, I wish people could know what I know, mm. you know, it's just, uh, yeah, I could never have imagined this path but leading to this place. Leading to this yeah. place, yeah. but it's I look back now and I'm like, "Oh, mm. it had to be." Yeah. Like it had to do it. So, let's talk about then some of those steps. So, you isolated, that was step 1. Yeah. And then where did you go from there that was steps in the positive direction to where you are now? Because I think like a lot of people, like we said before, there's a platform you're a guy that people look up to so it's like there's probably people that could listen to steps you talk and be like huh okay i can i can buy that book i can do this thing i can you know because it's like it's a very abnormal situation from thirty thousand feet but zoomed in in terms of like what you feel at the time like that's very relatable yeah what do i want to say here i uh and feel free to leave out also no I I, i i get it um well, I think the step one is stop lying to yourself. Mm. And that's what I was doing. I, like I told you, I, you know, I feel like I had some, I had some really tough challenges as a child that, that translated into some nasty things. And I had to, I had to be honest with myself about what, what had happened. And mm. I had to stop being like, Oh no, you should be grateful. Or you like, it's not that bad. People have it way worse than you. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I was you know, I thought I was doing the the honorable thing. Yes. Like, and I wasn't, I was cheating myself. That makes a lot of sense. And so the, the, like I had, if we want to get real, like I had forgotten most of my childhood. Like Mm -hmm. I just straight up didn't remember. Obviously that's the, yeah, that's what the body, you know, that's what the mind were built to survive and it, you're not ready to deal with it and it just, it's gone. There's so much in my life gone. Yeah. Crazy shit, dude. And you have an opportunity to face that head on. And when I did, it was hell on earth, like darkest times of my life. Like it was, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound overly dramatic, but, um, you talk about like, I was the type of guy you tell me about anxiety, depression or something. I'm kind of like, come on, man. Like you just, just look at dude, just look, just, just see the bright side. Like it's not so bad. Right. And I totally understand how you could feel that way. But when you know, like those guys listening to this right now, like when you know, you know, mm. and it's not fun. And I was there and I was living by myself in California. I cut myself off from everyone. Like was barely even talking to my trainer, barely talking to my family. And I was just down and I was in such obviously it takes action like you have to you have to take steps and action to get out of that place yeah it's not and when you're there you know how hard it is to do really anything like be social or just go outside do things right and I mean what really brought me what really brought me back was a dirt bike Mm. I knew I had to like obviously I was off the bike for a long time but you know, my release date was coming up and I'm like, mm. even in that place, like, that's why I always dirt bikes, man. Like I knew that I still love that. And I mm. still, I knew I would never forgive myself if I didn't get up and keep going because it, you know, you, you're in that place, you know, you kind of feel like 
everybody's kind of laughing at you, mm. you know, like you're a joke, you've been hurt and you just, you know, you're, you know, very, and, you're, and to be fair to you, you fucking copped it, copped it like hard from people. What do you right. mean? Oh, that's, I guess that's an Aussie slang. Yeah, yeah. So copped it is like, well, oh, fuck, I don't even know how you'd explain it. So like you took it, like people really were hard on you in a lot of yeah. ways, like the fans, the industry, yeah. like people were super super hard on you too so i think like you saying that well and the weight of it like that's very real and i think you were the poster boy for that shit in a sense you know yeah and i think even i i look back like i did an interview with uh jason wygant in like march um this was right after i had surgery you know i did the commentating thing at minneapolis yes yeah, early yeah, yeah. 22 and like the things I, I, I walked, you know, it was all about perspective. And it was basically about how this isn't going well for me, but like, I'm still okay. And, and that was, that, that was me telling myself, like, I know all the steps. Like I yeah, know, you know the things I to know say. all, well, it's not even the things to say. It's like, I genuinely, I genuinely believed what I was saying. Like I believed mm. I was fine and I was, I was lying to myself and there was stuff that I've been run like dark stuff that I've been run from a long time like that just buried 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 and you know I was sitting there and I you know I basically made a decision like I'm tired of being alone like I was living a lonely life like it's win all the races in the world like you still you can be around people and still be alone oh dude yeah. you have no idea like yeah. just not being able to connect with anybody yeah and I yeah, dude, I just had to, dirt bikes were coming back around and obviously there's a lot of people that have helped me do mental work to, to get back. Like you, you need, there's resources there. Um, and I did a lot of that. I mean, straight up, we would talk about it. Like I, I definitely went to therapy and yeah. I went a lot and it was it's really, good. yeah, no, it's fantastic. It really is. It's, it's not for, it's just like going to the gym, man, Yeah, for your mind, yeah. you know, and whatever stigmatize. I don't, I don't care. I, saved my life really yeah. at the time. Um, and I, you know, I still, obviously I'm always work in progress and the more you yeah. learn, the more you realize you don't know. Shit. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, man, it was, it was all dirt bikes. It's like I had to figure it out and it took me a while. It even, I was still struggling like in the beginning of supercross this year, like it didn't really change for me until like halfway through supercross. Like I was dealing with some shit there were some times where i was like i can't believe i'm racing mm. like this doesn't feel it was almost like i wasn't even nervous for the race because it, it feels like i'm fighting this thing that's so much bigger than mm. any like and yeah. you know how it is like supercross is nerve-wracking like your fireworks are going off and it's like a big a lot. adrenaline experience yeah. and it felt like it felt so small yeah so you're pretty numb at that point numb then. completely yeah. couldn't feel anything dude yeah so yeah it took a you know therapy meditation helped me so much and my girlfriend did yeah like talk about meeting somebody at the right i met her at a i met her at a at a um one of my buddies one of my buddy's girlfriend at the time plays played with her in a field hockey team in massachusetts and it was just like uh i went over to her house met her there she was there for spring break and talk about like meeting somebody at the, the, perf right at the perfect time yeah it's like she's so optimistic but realistic. Mm. Like I can't do, I can't do the blind optimism for me. I, yeah, doesn't, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can't connect with that. Yeah. She's realistic, but sees the best in everything. Um, dude, I could, I could, I could, sit, I could probably start crying right now, but she, if it wasn't for her, man, like, I don't know what I would have done. She was, that's a real thing. Yeah, dude. dude. It was, uh, I, I had no idea. Like I had no idea what love is. Mm. No clue yeah i didn't have any love in my life like yeah none any yeah and honestly while i'm here i should probably apologize to ex-girlfriends because i wasn't like dude, i wasn't like a, everyone though. dude i know i wasn't like an i wasn't i, was I wasn't like any shit. type of abusive or yeah, anything yeah. like that like nothing like that but just just crazy up and down and yeah. it just selfish i had no idea like i just had no idea what i was yeah. doing you yeah. know i had good intentions but i think yeah, that's i think that's probably a hallmark of knowing you've found the right person though in a sense because it's like so for me right if i talk about being honest with yourself 
So I have, I've had like long-term girlfriends. Never had a problem getting a girlfriend. Yeah. Always had girls Same. like me. I've always been a, like I can go in a bar. I can get girls to not get girls. It's probably the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, but I you get, know I get what you're saying. Yeah. So it's like, I've yeah, never, it's, it's not, not been a problem right. for me, but then the relationships would end. Yeah. And it's like, here's this beautiful girl, beautiful girl, heart of gold, kind of, that's five of my ex-girlfriends. So I'm describing, you know, these amazing people that I managed to have a nasty, don't talk to them anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And it's like, that's fucked up. It and is, and yeah. to be honest with yourself, it's that hard. was me. It's hard. That was yeah. literally all me, you it know? It was me too. And so I just think that when you, you, that's like a hallmark of finding a person when you can kind of realize that you, un, you can see all the ways that you made the mistakes in the past. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, if for me now, like, literally yesterday, my wife cracked the shits at me massive. Uh, I was working on my dirt bike instead of FaceTiming her. And there's a pretty short window yeah. that we can work between right. because she's in Australia. Yeah, right I did now. that. You know, my my, yeah. my girlfriend went to Australia to study abroad. And I, uh, I know all about that. Yeah. So it's like, I wanted to go get new tires to ride tomorrow. Yeah. So I was like, well, fuck this FaceTime. Yeah, <laughs> I totally. haven't spoke to her in five days, but fuck this FaceTime yeah. about. But, you know, so then there's a, it. she blew up in the slightest way. And instantly, I was just like, you're right. 100%. Yeah. You're right. This is why oh, I did what man. I did. This you talk is why about I... learning to swallow your pride. Yeah. In it's ego. It's all fucking and ego. I, let me actually go back and say, w- when I said, like, what, what helped pull me out of it, a lot of it was her. Yeah. Because I felt like, wow, this is a girl that I really see something in. And I'm not, I'm not going to keep doing Because my relationship is my relationships before were just the same thing yeah, cycle, yeah, yeah, the same yeah, thing yeah. over the and over same, again bro. and i and i felt like i felt like i was trying so hard to change or whatever but i i just had no idea what was going on yeah and that was one of the big reasons for me to face what i, I met her in march of 2022 yeah it was one of the big big reasons for me to like look myself in the mirror and really get my shit together yeah because i'm like i don't i don't want to look back and no i, I fucked this up too exactly yeah, yeah. And that was a lot of it, you know, yeah. and a lot of my emotional, I guess, baggage issues from childhood. Yeah. That that's where they manifested themselves. The worst is any type of romantic yeah. relationship, yeah. you know? And so I was like, and it, it's been like, I feel like we've been together for 10 years, the yeah. stuff that we've gone through together. And she's just been so patient and yeah. like, just so awesome. You yeah. know, she, she has her own thing too. Like she, you know, she's a D1 athlete. She's like 4.0 GPA yeah, and wants insane. to be an agent. Like what, you know, is just got so much going for herself, but it, she's just so healthy with, mm. she's got such a healthy relationship in terms of like being herself. But, you know, cause at first for me, it was, it was like, oh, me and the person are like one, you know, you yeah, don't know how to, yeah. you don't know how to do that. Right. So she's just, I've learned, she's, she's 23 and I've, I've learned so much yeah. from her. Yeah. Dude, yeah. it's so cool. I mean, there's a like when I met my wife now I was probably I reckon I would have been at my like lowest point and it was probably like it was Feb 20 Feb 2020 and it was like before COVID yeah yeah. yeah. I won't tell the full fucking story but maybe I'll tell you off air at some point it was the craziest few years we got separated for fucking two years no shit yeah it was crazy she was in China stuck in China through all of covid so but anyway like i was i just i'd broken up with the my ex who i was with for a few years and it was like a seat we lived together the whole like yeah that's a tough one i did that too dude i was homeless for five months i slept in the studio in australia because she was in the apartment she had nowhere to go yeah i didn't want to be there because it's like that i was like we'll just get back together yeah you know what i mean so i was like literally the podcast was kicking off like it was doing amazing I was finally had the first bit of like financial freedom in my life. Yeah. Like I was riding, I was in Australia with like my best friends, my brother lived right next door and you know, like everything was so sick and I was so fucking low and it was, and probably a similar thing that, you know, you went through when it's like, I've got all this shit, I'm racing, I'm the man, I'm factory cow, I'm fucking got millions of dollars. Like I'm, oh, this is, this is how it should feel. But yeah, it's just crazy. But not like, to have that, not to have like this, I feel like when you have a, 
you know, I've only kind of known what a healthy relationship is for a very short time now. So I don't want to speak like I, yeah. like I know, but it, it's almost oh like, it, it's, like <laughs> it's like you have a, it's like you have a base camp. Yeah. You know, it's like you have a base camp and you, you build each other up and to like to have that to like at the end of the day, you know, no matter like this, this thing could burn to the ground right now, yeah, like yeah, you know, you, yeah. you know, you know, your wife's going to be there and like you guys can work it out and to, I've never had that. I've never really had like that home, like that place that I can go where like everything's safe and good. And, yeah. you know, we're still doing, obviously we're doing long distance and we have been, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's rewarding. It's, it's a game changer. Oh, and, and when you got, like, I think the, the real utility for me, so we're, we're in Bali when we like first got together Bali, and sick. so we, it was such crazy how we met, but we were, we ended up, we flew together to Bali so we could hang. And then we get there and I remember I had ads to record for the podcast mm-hmm. and uh, we were outside. I couldn't get internet in the room, like the villa that we were in or whatever. So there's some situation. I ended up sitting at the pool and there was like all these people around me, all these fucking influencer models and big massive dudes. And, and I'm just sitting at the, I had a jacked up shoulder at the time and I'm just sitting there trying to get these ads done for the show. Didn't have anyone working for me, whole thing, just me. And, uh, and then I got like really self-conscious about reading the ads because I had to do it in front of all these people. Yeah. And I just wasn't going to do it and I wasn't going to do it and I wasn't going to post a show. And I, I was just like, I was just going to wait until I got home. And, but it's like, that's bad business. Like, that's just not what you do, you know? And I got this fucking pep talk from this Russian chick <laughs> that, that just fully told me, like, she just spoke to my soul in like one moment. No you know? way. And, I, and it was like, she you know i'm sure she'd remember it but it was just like this tiny thing like that's a tiny gesture for someone to like be that real with you that direct in the moment and then it literally i never forgot it it's like it just unlocked a different confidence i know know what you're saying you know what i mean i can't really i can't really vocalize like i but i know what you're talking about well i think it's when when you've got somebody in your corner that believes in you more than you yeah and i think that that's kind of what it comes down to and it's like the thing then that i've noticed throughout the last you know five years is that four years is that um like 99 percent of the time i'm down to be the fucking man i'm down to be the provider i'm down yeah. to pay for everything i'm down to like i'll put the world on my back mm-hmm. and i'll be the guy but though one percent of time where you're not that guy and you you just can't have the world on your back and then you can go and crawl into her fucking lap in the fetal position totally. on the couch. It sounds so lame. No, it's like no. rubbing your hair. I get it. And be like, you know what? You're great. You're fine. Everything's, yeah. you're doing you so good. Fine. Yeah. And it's like when you've got that, that's the, that's the utility. That's where it's like, if, if you've got someone that can do that for you in your lowest moment and make you believe in yourself when you don't believe in yourself, I, I, it's immeasurable what that can do for a person. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's like a, you know, it's like a partnership, like a business partnership. You know, that's a, you know, they say that's the most important piece of paper you'll ever sign, mm. you know, in terms of like your life success. Yeah. I, I definitely feel that, um, not to divulge too much of the personal stuff, but Jess is, she's very, she's very independent, you know, and she, she, she's very passionate about what she's passionate about. And I come from a world where, I kind of always just expected a girl to kind of follow me around Mm -hmm. and like make my life easier. And at the end of the day, that didn't like that didn't, that's what I thought I wanted. And like, I look around and kind of, that's what's going on everywhere around me. So, but I found, you know, she's made, she challenges me in that way. I challenge her in ways. And I guess I've found so much, it's it's so rewarding for me to support her Mm. and what she's doing you know, and it not like, I realize I, I really don't like when it's all about me yeah, all the yeah, time, yeah, you know, I, that's yeah. not me. Yeah. And that's been, that's been cool, you yeah. know, and, but you're right. I mean, the, going back to my, kind of my dark time, if it wasn't for her, it probably would have dr- drug out quite a bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that you got waking up. Yeah. So when did you get that? And like, I guess as a fellow waking up user, what's your experience been like? Meditation for those who yeah. don't know. Sam yeah. Harris. Sam Harris is that? Yeah, I, I kind of, I'm actually doing Headspace now. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I, I went through the whole introductory course. Like yeah. it's like 95 meditations. Yeah. Um, I've always considered, I think Italians were just naturally like kind of have a short fuse. Yeah. And I've always been more react. I've always had this, I've always been supremely aware of like who I want to be. Yeah. You know, like the type of guy I want to be and yeah. like my reputation and, and how I treat others and everything means more to me than anything could ever. That's a good thing. It, I don't know why I've always been that way. I, pr- I probably owe it to my family or, or something, but um, like it's creating it, what it is, is creating space between the stimulus and the response. Okay. Yeah. You know, that yeah. that's, that's been the biggest thing for me is to be like, I can choose I can choose whether to let something ruin my day or not, Mm. or I can choose just being able to have a choice on how I react. And the biggest thing that I struggled with is letting things go. Like I'd feel a loss. Like you feel a loss after a race for Mm. a long time. You can stick with it. Right. It's like, as much as we say, we want to be happy. A lot of the time, like you go to therapy, the first thing they're going to ask you is like, do you actually want to be happy? Mm. And you got to kind of confront that in yourself. And most of the time, what what does the brain hate more than anything else is the unknown. Mm. So if you're in a bad place, you don't, you're not, it's, that's why it's hard to break out of like a depressive state because it's just a snowball. Yeah. And it's like a, it's like a self feeding cycle. Think, feel, think, feel, think, feel, think, feel, think, feel. And you just attach, you have the feeling and then you just attach whatever's right there to it. Right. It's just being aware of that and then practicing it. I'm no monk. Like I still, yeah, you're getting close. Yeah. No. <laughs> I still, I'm like a work in progress, man. There's a hundred percent. There's a lot of things that I've mistakes I've made even in the past month and how I reacted to things. But yeah. in general, I felt that I've had way more of a, cause there's been a lot of times in my life where this idea of how I want to be in relationships, for example, that I haven't, that I haven't been that way. Cause I feel I didn't have an, like I didn't have enough, um, like I was over, I was overrode by emotion. Yeah. 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 And, and so those are the most, those are the times in life that I regret the most is like when I, when I let something get the best of me in that way. Yeah. So it's just, for me, it's just been able, it's, I've just been able to kind of process things more and everything just kind of slows down. And, um, I feel that it helps me kind of amplify the good and negate the bad a bit. Yeah. And so what in you, what, what's your, Oh, I mean, I, th- I probably, <laughs> I would say if there's like a menu on, on offer of like what you get out of it, I think I got like the whole menu in a sense. Like I just ate everything, but I mean, I there's definitely, a lot there. there is a lot there. I think, what did you think about like free will and did you go through any of that stuff? Yeah, I, I toiled with that for a while, but some of the things that I was going through, I, I just wasn't up for that yeah. question. You know, there's some things that existential questions that I've been asking myself since I was eight or nine, you know, that stuff that's not really talk about what's productive and what's not. Maybe I'll get to that at some point, but I wasn't really ready for that. Dude. So I, I, uh, that one, that was the door for me that like I could, I could really sit with myself and see a real lack of free will, like feel it sit. Like it was almost like a, once I scary once I had that it was there's literally not a world that I could go back like I can't walk back through that door to where I feel and it fucked me up so yeah there was like three months so when you say like you're not ready for that it just it hit me I mean are you ever really ready probably probably not but I mean so I'd say that was probably in like 2019 maybe that I really had that. Like, I would say, like, I legitimately sat in the studio one day and had, like, a full ego death. Like, the thing that's promised with, like, a DMT, mm-hmm. like, ayahuasca, oh, all you, that shit. You can get you can I, get a lot just by sitting there with yourself, dude, dude. That was me. I just fully had that moment. And then I reckon once I had... The, once those neural pathways fire, it's, like, the most aha moment you've... I've yeah. had some of those, and it's incredible. And you can't go back. Can't go back. So, I reckon... I had three months of hell of trying to figure Decipher out that. Where how does that fit in what I do? Yeah. Yeah. How does that fit with everything? Yeah. But I mean, I think I'm in a place now where gives you more freedom. Way, way more, bro. Like it's actually insane. Like I don't really have bad days. Yeah. You know, I have, I have bad I'm situations, you, man. you know, like I have bad situations. I'm always going to have bad situations. Bad, bad shit happened to me, but like, I remember um, 
and I guess like for the, it, there's like in the for people listening, like there's Sam Harris has some f- theories around free will. Yeah, he puts him in a very modern context that it's the same in Buddhism. It's it's like really the same everywhere. Yeah, and then there's this whole like there is no self, like the self is a contract, a loot. Mm-hmm. Like so, that's kind of like the full gamut of what's on offer. And it's like if you're the Buddha, that's what enlightened me. That's what that whole kind of deal is. But yeah, like I remember I had like three months, man, where I just was like, I was again by myself. So I like broke up with that chick. Yeah. And then we were, Sometimes we had this like long alone. distance thing. I had no one in my apartment. First time in my life, I had like enough money to just like live by myself. Yeah. And so I just like literally for all of COVID, bro, I locked myself in my room. Like I just fucking made YouTube videos and thought about this shit essentially. But yeah, there was like three months of like nihilism heavily yeah. set in and i was like Fuck. i've been there in in, yeah. s- in times yeah and so i ended up getting myself out of that but i remember having a, i broke my hip in like Jul- june 2020 or something and i i lost all the feeling in my legs and feet from it but it was because i ripped the skin off my ass cheek basically Oof. and it's called a, a degloving injury and so all this blood like filled up in my spinal cord and shit. Oh, so I thought I was fucking paralyzed. So I'm laying in this MRI machine, that but it, it got like kind of worse as it went yeah. on. So I'm like, and I, I went home by myself after breaking this shit and that went to got scans and they're like, you've got a cracked pelvis. Like you can't really do much for it. Don't do nothing. And then I was by myself and I had to get up and get food. And I just started getting like that drop foot. You know, where like you see people that have yeah. had spinal cord injuries. Yeah. Yep. So I started getting that. So I drove back to my parents and I was like, fuck, I need to go to hospital. Went to hospital and I just, I was paralyzed in my head. That's, yeah. that's what oh, happened. Dude, that, that's, that's a life changing moment in itself when you entertain a thought like that. And so I'm in this fucking MRI machine as peaceful as I've ever been in my life. Really? Just, and that, that was one of the moments where I was like, damn, like I've changed. Like I'm different now, you know? And it's like, it just is what it, like literally yeah. it is what it is, is the most fundamental, found, like that's truth. If you could say one thing is truth, it's that it is what it is. Like every decision, I, like then you go and you play the free will game yeah, back forever, you know? And even my parents, like when I, my granddad, what happened to him? There's no free will. There's yeah. no free will on that. And then how that affects you, as a person for the rest of your life you have no freedom in that that was not your decision you weren't yeah. you didn't decide to be that guy's son you didn't decide to see that you didn't just des- none of that fucked your life changed your life completely you've got no and if you don't have this perspective on it if you do, don't have that toolbox how are you supposed to live the yeah. only way you know that it plays out you've got this thing over here which very i feel like very few people in the world really fully understand or embrace but it's like if you don't have that you're on autopilot you're on autopilot with the rest of the rest of people the rest of us you know and like and now i look back it's actually been a very interesting experience to come back now after five years of being away i knew none of this the last time i was here it's like it's, it's like viewing everything in a different lens completely different world like I'm literally living in a completely different world, like as a result that's of it. That's awesome. But to your point, you have to face some fairly heavy shit. For really, a and of that's time. what like I can see in your eyes when I when I like I talk about if you know, you know. Yeah. Not a lot. I, maybe maybe more people do than it seems. Yeah. But I just feel like in general, a lot of people really don't want to know. No they really don't want to know, you know? And so I think it, even I've seen pushback with some of my kind of, some of my transparency. It's like people are kind of threatened by it a little bit because it means they have to, most of the time people are just running around so busy that they have no time for any of this kind of thing. And it's kind of dismissed. It's kind of dismissed. But to guys like you and I, it's like, it's like, this is why we're here. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't, it's not a choice for me. Like this is like, it, it, I mean, I guess it is a choice, but it's, there's not an, op, it's not an option. Like yeah. it's, I have to. But you've had these thoughts your whole life. Yeah. I've had these thoughts my whole yeah, life. Yeah. It's just the path. Like it's, it's just there. Like we, we take the challenge, we take the challenge on. 
Yeah. You know, and you face it head on and there's, there's different ways to live life. I'm not saying that it's right. Like Mm. the whole idea of good and bad, you know, and and following stoic philosophy and stuff that, you know, the idea of good and bad, it's just your opinion of it. Like what you think. It's kind of, I mean, obviously there's some universal kind of rights and wrongs. Right. Yeah. But, um, but depending on how far down the rabbit hole you want to go. Exactly. You know? So, yeah. So it's, I don't have a judgment towards people that want to live life like on the surface and, you know, cause it's, I don't know, like I need some more of that in my life sometimes, you know, yeah. like I, then that's what yeah, I talked yeah, about yeah, earlier yeah. Yeah. and, and learning how and having these thoughts since you're a child feel like it's not really a, a choice or an option for you. Yeah. Well, I've learned now when, you know, when I'm just on the golf course with my buddies and I just have a good time, yeah. you know, or, or when I'm at the track and I'm riding and, um, sometimes me, um, getting sixth place in a race feels like the end of the world in the moment because I allow myself to be yeah, fully yeah, engaged yeah, in yeah, that. Yeah, you're it's in not it. this yeah. nihilism. It's not, yeah. it's not this like, Oh, nothing matters. Yeah. You know? Um, but like you said, like if you, if, once you, once you take the challenge on and you get to the other side of it, life becomes, you can't walk back through that door Yeah, and, and life becomes different. And, yeah. and for you and I, I think it becomes better and we're able to get more out of it. And, I think where you're at, where I'm at, we realize that it's 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 just never going to stop for us, really. Yeah. You know, like there's a level of peace that we've gotten to now, but we're always going to be learning. Oh, there's I, always yeah. more to learn about yourself yeah. too. And and to me, some to some people, it's a waste of time. Mm. And to me, it's like some wh- people they don't need it. Yeah, exactly. Some people fucking Ex- kill it. Exactly. Like my mom is a perfect example. I'm, very yeah. not to be confused. She's a very intelligent lady. She's the happiest lady on earth. Yeah. Like she's just cruising just all the time, and she just doesn't. It. She doesn't need it. Like yeah. it's fine. It's I'm not saying it's wrong, but for me, it's, well, why, it's it. why I'm here. Yeah. Like I and I had to do this to get to this place, or I was gonna be a miserable human being. Yeah. So no, it's no. like I'm done. Like for a while, I felt like I would have to kind of apologize for that because it's not. I don't know. It's just a little bit weird. I yeah, guess I'm I done apologizing yeah. for it. Like, <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. The thing that I guess my mission with it like at some point i really want to write a book about it that's like for the every man like this is just if you don't give a fuck about this shit here's a book for you that i'll tell you why it matters you know that's not high level it's just very very attainable for people but dude that's why we love fucking dirt bikes oh man like that so this this whole project or i guess my existentialism came from being a kid and just literally doing every possible thing I could to ride my bike. And I wasn't even very good. Yeah. And that in my head was the biggest conundrum that I had to figure out right. from a young age. It's like, why am I so obsessed with doing this thing that I'm not that fucking good at? We can't afford and I'll ne- there's never going to be a future in motocross for me, which is what I thought at that time. But it's like, I figured out and it's funny, like you go back the early podcasts, I'm asking the same question, but with none of the knowledge, right? right? So it's like, I remember asking Travis Pastrana, Robbie Madison, like, tell me what you know about this place where you don't have any thoughts. Because yeah. that's what, that's what you're doing. Cause that's what I'm Flow doing. State. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do, but I'm not that good at it. And I was just obsessed with this feeling and this idea of that voice in your head dropping away. Gone. Everyone talks about it. Everyone. Everyone that surfs, everyone that rides, every, everyone that does any. When you party with your mates. Yep. Like when there's that feeling when the self drops away, it happens all the time. When it you're does. watching TV, there's so many times in your life where that voice isn't there. And when you realize that that voice is the thing that fucks your life, but then there's other times when it's not there and you can just realize that it cannot be there all the time. You don't need the dirt bike. You don't need the surfboard. You can be in an MRI machine you with get to choose. no feeling in your legs and have bliss, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I think, you know, you say people don't care. I believe that. Like, that's a true statement. But I also think people think it's a lot harder to attain than what it actually is and that it's only there through something else and that's the part where i wish that we could change it's almost hard because it's so easy 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? People miss it like, all the time because yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's r- literally right there. Yeah, yeah. So, but it <laughs> I was. I feel you. But yeah, it's like we we are. Not everyone cares, and not everyone's gonna take on that yeah, workload. Which is fine, but it's like it's so easy. It's yeah. right there. You you do this in your daily life so many times. But I feel like, and I don't know, I don't know how you feel about this, but I I just feel that. I just feel that everything is kind of in perfect time, mm. you know, and I, I think maybe one day society will evolve to be in that place and mm. it's just not now, but you need like, there's probably, I don't know, two thirds or one third, or there's a certain amount of people like us that are, that are getting there. Right. And I don't know, maybe we're the kind of there's the like front line point. of it, yeah. you know, like, I don't know if people were really, yeah, obviously there's always been like monks and stuff and I don't know all the history, but I just feel that the, the earth has like a, a balance to it and everything happens mm. in perfect time. So yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's like there'll, there'll maybe be just, a tipping point. Yeah. Maybe it's just not right now. Do you get that feeling when you ride, like you can associate with that no voice in your head kind of feeling? Yeah. I think when I was, when I was younger, I used to get a lot of outside, like just like a lot of outside thoughts in my head, you know, and while riding. Yeah. While riding, just have stuff come in. Like this is really young. Like, mm. 10, 11, 12, 13. As, I, as I've gotten older, I, I've felt, I didn't know what it was, but I definitely feel that I'm able to, like, I just, I can hyper, like, I hyper focus, mm. you know, like, and I'm able to kind of be free out there, I guess. And I, I've definitely gotten better at that since I've started meditation, yep. you know, yep. anybody that's got, anybody that even, I mean, you could hand a headspace course to like a 12 year old kid and watch the difference from, you know, in him, like Mm. the studies, clinical studies they've done on meditation after, after just like two months of 10 minutes a day is pretty wild. Like Mm. it's, it's something that is, uh, like you said, it's right there. It's like, it's pretty easy. It's, it doesn't really even take that much time Mm -hmm. like to kind of unlock that, that level. I wish I started when I was younger. Yeah, dude. I I mean, I I think the same thing. But with that being said too, like I read Waking Up in like, fuck, 2017. Oh, really? Like I read it and it just did nothing. Yeah. Everything (laughs) is, you know, so it's so, yeah, it's so hard to, I guess, yeah, you just don't know what you don't know and you you don't know when it's going to click. You don't know when you're, when you're going to get it. But I think it's like, that's why you got to show up all the time you know like that's why you gotta take swings and and like the the those podcasts you know where i said like i fucking wish i would have cut it's just reps i'm just like you know what you can't have a clean rep every time it's like no one expects to your point perfection every single time we are we hold ourselves to the the highest standard but it's like when you just keep showing up like at some point it's gotta it's gotta pay off you know but yeah i'm definitely it's not like i got shown the way and it was like this instant thing it was like no i did i read that book four years before i had it had any impact on me i think you t- talk about keep showing up you know I've, I've had that mentality through and i didn't really know what it was for i just always have been determined and talk about having injuries setbacks in the sport i always kept showing up kept looking for the best in things didn't let myself get cynical all this kind of stuff right but i, I was looking for like keep showing up to get this, mm, you know, not just to keep showing up because to get, that's to get, enough. Well, this is, this is what I have in my head that I want. This is why I'm showing up Th- this right here. And if I don't get this, it's a failure. Like then all of the showing up is for nothing. Yes. But shift your perspective a little bit sometimes. And like what this is, what keep, you know, that the, the process of, of showing up and coming back and applying yourself and being the best you can. Okay. Yes. I haven't, won championships like I want to and I, I still want to I still believe I can achieve that but look at what else it's done for me mm-hmm. like it, just because it's not this By thing proxy. this plan this you know w- exactly what you want doesn't mean it hasn't paid off yeah. for you yeah you know and I think that's the biggest thing like some people will come up to me at the races these days and it's almost like they're it's like they're worried about me or something. <laughs> they feel like, sorry for you. Yeah. And I'm like... <laughs> That's so fucking weird. I'm like, dude... I'm killing it. Like, I got a house on a golf course in yeah. California. Like, I'm doing what I love every day. I mean, it's like... We're good. I'm... I'm dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm chilling, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am chill. But it's just funny because everybody, you know, 
everybody thinks like that. Like if you don't have this, no way you can be happy. Right. Like, yeah, but I don't know. I think the big thing for me is just kind of realizing what's there instead of just being hyper-focused on the one thing that you want. Yeah. So you have to be happy with this year though. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm, all right, let's, uh, that's the, <clears throat> let's, let's keep aside any personal feelings Yeah. on paper, at least for me or me visually watching you as a fan of the sport. 2023 has been a sick year. It's like you've done really good. You're at all the races. Yep. I mean, you missed a few too but it's like dude you, there's some big improvements being made and the other thing i think and I'm very stoked that carmichael was so like adamant about this all year yeah is that like he needs to be here this is exactly what he needs to do this is a great ride for adam cincerello like that was really hit home through the broadcast because of him and i think he did you a massive oh service sure. this year because that's the truth it is and people list people listen to ricky carmichael when he talks you know he yeah he was really kind to me and, and he was right like that i needed to show up and do i i've clearly in my life i've had one gear and that would that a lot of that <laughs> you're was, not first you're last <laughs> exactly well and a lot of that is and like as smart as i am in a way you know i was being stupid because a lot of the things that i had to face in 2022 like childhood stuff was the reason why i was riding like i had a gun in my head all the time and i couldn't change that yeah and so step one for me is like how does all these new personal changes how does this fit in me racing yeah, yeah, and like yeah. how do i get yeah. the best yeah. out of myself and and but yeah i mean i knew that i was going to be a little bit cautious i knew that i wasn't completely healthy um and i like I said, I was dealing with some things like till halfway through Supercross and I, you know, I really was kind of like an overnight thing for me, like kind of snapped out of it and started kind of seeing everything for what it was. It was great. Um, but yeah, my, my goal was to race all the races and just try to just tick away and get a little bit better and show some flashes here, lead some laps. And, um, I think like I am enjoying myself a lot and I'm in a great like place mentally, all that, but I still, at the end of the day, like I'm a competitor yeah, and I know I have, yeah, yeah. And I, and I know I have a lot in the tank. Like obviously you got the new generation coming along, the Deegans, the jets, the chases and all this. And I, I just think that I still have a lot, a lot left to give. Yeah. And you, you know what it's like to kind of take on the challenge that, that you've taken on like when you feel like you, you feel like you've really, um, you know, when you've done that, you, it unlocks a lot for you. Yeah. Like I, I feel that I'm capable of so much more and I don't know how it's going to manifest itself, but I feel that I'm capable of so much more than I ever have been in my life. And on top of it, I don't love what I'm doing because of this is attached to it yeah, because yeah. it's going to get me in the hall of fame or it's going to get me a house on the beach or 20 million or a slap on the ass from the industry. You know, I love it because I just love, I just love it. Yeah. And, it's so easy to show up to work every day yeah. when when you have a genuine love for something. Um, so I'm just I'm just riding the wave and doing everything I can, but definitely excited for the future. So what like what are you working on now? Because I feel like and I asked this question to Ando at the press conference at Washougal. It's like what do you see? that you need to improve on. And I mean, that's probably why you've got Nick as well. Like he's the eye in the sky when it comes to that. But when you look at what Jet just did to everybody outdoors, what's your immediate takeaway of like, I have to do this better? Well, you, I, have, you have, I have to be more efficient all around because what Jet and Chase both do so well is they're going so fast, but they're not sprinting. Yeah. So it's why they're able to do it and they can show up to the race and they can do that every time because they've found a way through their technique and um, everything else to make that like an 80 or 90%. And I know I have the talent to at least get close to that. So I think it's, it's finding a more efficient riding style and working around, working around my arm, yeah, like yeah. have to ride with my legs more um, things like that. And just, I think my intensity, I was a little bit on the cautious side all year because I, I didn't want my hand to fly off the bar or yeah. I just didn't want to, I, I knew that it would be a success if I showed up every yeah. time and it yeah. was essential to anything I'm going to do in the future. So I was definitely on the cautious side. So it's just knowing, like having that sprint pace back, 
it's it's not something I've worked on a lot this year. It's more like um, yeah, you've just walked just more like endurance based yeah. work. Yeah. You know, I'm laying down a foundation for what I hope is going to be, you know, an, a great next few years. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna have to, I'm gonna have to find a fair amount of pace, and it's gonna have to be easy for me. Like I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna have to find a way to make it easy for me, and I have days where I can do that. Like I have flashes where I can do that. So it's just about doing it all the time, and um, it just now at this point now it's using my experience. Like I've been around a while, and that's one thing I have on you know somebody like Jet that's 19 is I've just been around longer, so try to use that to my advantage. Yeah, I think for for me like i can see um i can see like even a unadilla was a real good example of um i think you could see so jet and sexton almost you could put them over top of each other right in terms of their technique how they look and it, dude isn't it crazy that just one year on chase's technique isn't the shit anymore oh man bro last wow. year it's like He's the fucking Don. Like, he's the guy. Totally. Him, him and Tomac last year was psychotic. It was nuts. Completely psychotic. Millville, Washougal. Unadilla. Psycho, dude. You know? And then it's like, one year on... This was the kind of horse I was riding the whole year to. Is like, bro, Sexton has not got slower. He's a fucking beast. Oh, no. Yeah, and he's even said that in interviews. That no he's one would not listen. Going, yeah. No one would listen. No, I know. And I get it. It's like you can't. People don't want to overhype Jet. I get it. Play it safe. But it's like fucking pretty obvious. Yeah, you're gonna what have was to going on. To yourself. Yeah, yeah. At least now we know. But it's like, dude, Saxon's a full savage. And like, oh, that that technique that he rides with right now, one year ago, is like on par with the best dude in the world. You know. But even me, like you look at Unadilla this year. I think that one of the one of the things that Sexton did so well and let him like elevate past everybody but Eli basically is like how much force he can put through his foot pegs. How oh, much yeah. force He's he so generates. Strong. Crazy, right? Yeah. So, and when we did the podcast and then like kind of off air, I was talking to him about it because I'm obsessed with like the technical yeah. side of it, you know? And then so he was saying to me like, the most amount of weight I feel is through my feet. And when I ride, I didn't have that. So I'm like trying to figure out like how do I get that feeling to where it's like all the weight is through my feet, right? right? But then you fast forward 12 months. And so Jet's doing that, but not in the braking bumps. You know, <laughs> so it's like I can see those little details and I'm probably not seeing them all the way. But it's like Unadilla, I think, was like a really great example of they're the same until you get into bumps and then chase is still putting all that force through the foot pegs and i think that that is what upsets his front end of his motorcycle is because there's so much force being pushed back into the ground that you get and the weight is on the rear that you're getting a lot of front end. so that's like my theory you know but then you see jet it's like he's puts all that weight back under acceleration he's doing that exact thing that chase is doing come into some braking bumps everything's light everything yeah, barely I see exactly what you're talking about and so like then you for me right i'm going okay so then what's that do for your suspension setup well i think that then you run way softer forks because instead of pushing that weight through the rear oh bike, yeah, yeah yeah and then slamming on the brakes with all, th 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 all that fucking force then that's what's like up so to me, I'm like, I can see like those tiny details. And it's like, if I'm chased, that's probably what I would work on is like, keep everything the same, but how do I be light under braking bump? And how do I get that front? Like I, I would feel like front end would come from that, yeah. you know? So it's like, a, do you have that version of that where it's like, you're looking at jet and you're seeing those types of yeah. details, you know? Yeah. And I like, mean, what do you, like, is there anything specific that, you know you think you could take away from this year a specific i mean i have to be i only started doing upper body stuff in the gym like two months ago I mean, yeah you're probably so just at a different place so like i have to be stronger like i have to be like my upper body like i have to be able to put more force into the bike legs everything i mean i've my legs are actually even though they're not massive are are really strong like i can put out some serious power um 
but it's it's all about me getting here because I have two ladder J procedures on both shoulders, complete reconstructions, so true, and like right? a, I have like a bone graft that you know I can raise my hand like this high. So you can't do so any this, overhead presses. So the nothing. more my outside elbows are up, the it's you know how muscles are weaker at the end of the range of motion. I mean yeah. that's that's it that's, for me. Uh, so I'm getting training like, and range. Even you you could tell a difference between two rounds in the outdoors and the end yeah. like I'm able to be a little bit more here and have some more leverage on the bike mm-hmm. and, and kind of use my length to my advantage yeah that that's that's the first thing for me is is getting upper body stronger um and I need to work on I kind of you, Tomac you see him coming to the turns a lot of times and he'll just like turn with his hips like his yeah everything will be pointed yeah. the way that he wants to go yeah and I have a tendency to kind of get into the get into the turn and stay in that position and I kind of like and, stay a little bit yeah. I could stay a little bit too far back where I need to sit my butt on the seat a little further back and get forward and get that kind of talk I do it right sometimes but not enough and that's things that I haven't really like even last off season man I wasn't able to get a bunch of quality right in with my you know i came into anaheim one like and everybody was like is he gonna make the main kind of really was, yeah it was bad like i was like four seconds a lap slower than anderson like it was it was not good you know i just didn't have the time like i didn't have the yeah i could only go through the whoops like for like sections basically like we would do sections and and you know since then i've obviously been able to do a lot more during the week and that's kind of been gradual throughout the year um so a lot of it is strength and that'll help me get back to the things that I, I was really great at. Like I'm really, I'm, I'm great at fast sections, like really fast sections of the track are normally my strength. And like this year, not so much my strength. Cause I'm really not trying to, I'm really strength. not. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the strength. Yeah. So the strength is slowly coming back. So I just need to keep working on that. Then I'll go back to doing the things that I was really good at. Yeah. And then from that place, then I'll be build. able to add yeah. things. But yeah. first I need to get back to what I was doing. Yeah. You know, and that just, that's just going to take time. And, um, I've got plenty of it. (laughs) That's such a good explanation though. Like the, that you can't just like, here I am working on the most high level. Like I'm splitting hairs between jet and chase, but it's like, Hey bro, I'm not even there yet. Let's fucking chill. Yeah. yeah. Like I need to, I I I mean, old me, old me wouldn't have cared if I was strong enough or not. I'd have just done it. I would have just gone for it. And it might've worked out for me seven times out of 10, but those three other times I'd be sitting at home. So mm. I'm not doing that anymore. So like, okay, then S- just straight speed. Like, do you think that you can match that speed? Like the jet and chase are gone. Like there, if you just had one lap, if I had, but the, the, the caveat, I'll, I'll, I'll pad this question for you. You're not going to do that. Like there's no, this is a hypothetical question. There's no reason for you to actually do this. But because I think from the viewer's perspective, you're just like, oh, he just can't go that fast. Yeah. But it's like, is that true? I think there's been times this year where even me completely sending it would not, I mean, the the level's been raised. I mean, Jet has changed the game. It's like you saw, you saw Tomac and Chase last year and you're thinking that's the bar. Well, the bar has gone up now. And, but it, generally speaking, yeah, I mean, I feel I can pretty much go as fast as I want to, but it's just about it being sustainable, mm. really. I mean, I, I think that if I didn't, if I really didn't think I could do that, then I would be a lot less motivated than I am. Mm. Like, cause I'm, I, I grew up winning and so that's what I know. And so that's what I'm always going to shoot for. Like, I'm never just going to be, oh yeah, okay. I'm a sixth place guy. Like I'm going to do everything I can to and train like I'm winning and yeah, I mean, I, I believe in my, my talent and speed. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think that's like a, it, I think that's like a cool thing to know because like I can't go as fast as I want. Like I'm capped out. Like there's a speed that my brain is down for me to go and that's it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I can, the project for me as a rider is like, okay, get fitter, get stronger, get better technique, get safer. And then you'll be able to ride more. Your speed will yeah, probably come up totally. once you can ride. Like if you're out there just at Glen Helen on a Thursday and you do two thirties as like an amateur dude, like that's an hour of bike time, an hour of picking different lines, that's, an hour of trying to, you know, and it's like, so, but it's not a matter of like, I see Martinez at the 
track or tickle at Glen Helen and I'm like okay bro I fucking got you like yeah. I, I cannot go, I know I can't right. go that far so it's like is that the same for like you and Barsha and Ant, you know it's just like oh well yeah, fuck we can't do that I think um, I think the re- I think because of my speed I still have a job and I yeah. still I still am here because I've had I've had injuries in my career and I've had long periods of time off the bike and if I didn't have the pace yeah you fall behind quick man yeah. it when you take a year off it is a massive deal Crazy, to come yeah. back and be even anywhere close cuz it no it never stops like everybody's always getting better and I've probably done half of the races the other guys have half of the bike time Maybe half of the time half. during the week half the testing all of that so i've done a lot with a lot less self-inflicted yeah so yeah. it is what it is yeah no victim but you know it's on me yeah but that's but facts. i i think yeah it's facts and i think you give me more time and i think we got some well i mean that's what's really impressive about hunter yeah like dude same deal two Same years deal. of you know two years of injuries like i remember my first like vindication of like oh, okay hunter's as good as i have been saying that he is was parlor when you guys battled oh yeah like he you, was shredding you were the fucking man at that point dude and i think that might have been the year you won the title maybe yeah it was. yeah uh and it's like he had that so he had title speed yeah, he won a model at high point too back then right injuries and it's like the fact that he's been able to come back and do no, what he's done the spit like this year it's crazy because there's dude compounding is the most powerful force in nature like that's a real thing whether it's money whether it's relationships whether it's a, a skill fitness yeah compounding you need compounding and it's like you said it's like you're earning all this interest as an athlete when you're healthy and you're on the program and then you take that bank account to zero and so to all of the compounding effect that you earned up to that point you know it's a lot hard it's a lot harder and you have to be um mentally very very strong and pretty intelligent too to kind of because at the end of the day you kind of need to take a shortcut you need to get here mm. without all this time yeah you know and you got to be able to do it and do it consistently too so it's a I, I went up to hunter this year a couple of times man it was one of, that was like talk about controlling a race and just how confident he was and everything and people forget so quick that it was rough for him you know there was a time where it seemed like every time he got on a supercross track he was you know he was out for a period of time like he would he would break something and a lot of you know he was written off at one point and then he came obviously last year made big strides this year came and just owned it all year and it's just like that's what Hunter does, you know. Mm. But he just he made it. He made, he made it look, it look like he's been. He, it it looks like he's been doing it. Like you feel like he's been doing it since he's been here now. Yeah. Like when I watch him ride, you know, it's like the, yeah. So it's funny, but that was impressive. And honestly, I think it's kind of a little bit of an underrated I year so for too. him. Obviously, with Jet coming in doing his thing, but it was yeah, it's really impressive. And he's gonna be really good on big bikes too. Yeah, I think so. That's really a, good. That's another dude yeah. to, for everyone to have to deal with. What do you make of Jet's season overall? We're fresh off the the twenty two and oh. As a guy at the races dealing with it, like what is it? How did it look from your perspective? I mean, it looked pretty damn easy to me. <sighs> Jeez, man. Yeah, I uh I mean impressive, obviously. I think you just have to have something special to be able to like I, I heard Tomac he was interviewed and he kind of talked about it too but just like to be that young and control a race like that like I feel to get to where I'm at now and kind of my relationship with racing when I'm out there what I think about all this stuff I feel like I had to go through so mm. much in order to even kind of like grasp yeah anything yeah you know and to have that kind of almost be natural it seems like to him it almost it's kind of like it makes me think of how we say meditation it's like it's it's so easy it's it's hard 
Yeah, and it's yeah. kind of similar to that. That actually makes kind of makes you think. Yeah, that it really is that easy. Like he he, it's it's a simple switch for him. Yeah, you know that's not so simple for everybody else. But it's 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 more impressive mentally than it is physically. Like yeah, obviously he has a bunch of talent, and I think his whole program, like with his dad and everybody, is just like he's just got a really, from what I can tell, great su- support system and a lot of like just his bike and how it looks and kind of how they tinker around and just their whole program and team is just the perfect place for him to kind of do what he's doing. Yeah. And I think, you know, we talked about the people that don't need meditation. Oh, <laughs> don't fuck with that he's guy's fine, head. bro. <laughs> don't touch him. He's fine. <laughs> he doesn't give, need give anything. Give him a donut. <laughs> yeah. Legit. Like he does not need it. Totally. That's the perfect example of yeah. the kind of guy that, you know, like no, he can just he's stoked. figure it out. And really it seems like he's a type of guy too. If it, like if it wasn't going great for him, he would just be like, Oh, well next time is going to be awesome. <laughs> you know, it's so all hard. you can do is just, <laughs> yeah, it's so hard yeah. to deal with that. No, he's, he's, he's really good. Uh, we got playoffs coming up. How do you feel about the whole playoff deal? I'm excited just because it's new, something different. Yeah. You know, I can't say I'm like fully frothing. Yeah, it's like the well, it, I'm excited to race. I'm always excited to race, especially I have a lot more enthusi- enthusiasm. Well. I think I have a lot more enthusiasm because, like, I have kind of, I've read like we talked about re loving like learning to love your parents again. It's like the same thing with dirt bikes. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I feel like I have a renewed relationship with dirt bikes. And so I'm, I'm always excited to go to work in general. Um, I'm not, it's not like the payout. I'm not like, oh yeah, like, you know, nothing like that. I just am excited because we've never done it before. Um, and I hope it's something that can progress the sport forward, you know, and last time we had one of these hybrid tracks, obviously it's monster cup. Yeah. I did pretty well there. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, yeah, we can make something happen. Yeah. I'm excited for, I guess, just to see what it does for like the industry the sport as a fan's perspective as well because like i'm a fan first um and i think that you know what does it do for us in terms of like another storyline to follow i think it already helped the sport in a massive way when it came to the outdoors um yeah like did getting people to show up and everyone showed up yeah you know like basha would not have come back from injury you know like there's a lot of guys that they just wouldn't have come back for the outdoors if it wasn't for this whole playoff deal, you know? Be kind of, I don't know. It'd be kind of cool if we went, you know, back in the day, they used to do some outdoor races like in between Supercross. Dude. That would be dope if it was just like a mixed bag. Because we get, you know, we get 10 rounds and people are going to hate me for this, but I think, I don't know. We race a lot and people get spoiled. You know, yeah. you get 10 rounds into Supercross and people are just kind of like, eh, yeah, yeah, eh, dude, eh. every you get halfway through outdoors, kind of like, eh, yeah, you know, like if you're really into it and you're watching every weekend, you know, you get to round, you get to round 10 and it's going on the boat or you're having a beach day with your family and watching the race. You're like, yeah, I'll, I'll catch real. the replay or I won't, or yeah. I'll watch the highlights on YouTube. Yeah. That's the general from the hardcore people. That's the general. Yeah. Consensus. Even the most hardcore So we got to, we got to find a way to F one's a perfect example. It's like they, they race enough for me to be interested, but not where I take it for granted because yeah. you, you watch them race in Japan and then it's three weeks until the next one. And you're like, you can't wait. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait. Yeah. You know, I think we need some of that, whether it's racing some outdoors in between. I think that would be cool, especially because they've obviously Feld and MX sports have a, have a good relationship now working together. Um, it would be cool if we kind of just yeah. went all over the board. It would really throw the teams for a loop. I don't, I'm not sure how it would all work and if it would. It would work, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. Dude, so Hunter actually suggested this to me today, so I'll, I'm taking zero credit for this idea. Okay. He was saying he reckons outdoors should start now and then you do like a condensed schedule through like August, September or maybe September, October, November. You have a couple weekends off over the holidays and then you just do Supercross the way that it goes into may and then you have the summer off because like he was saying today one of the hardest things that he finds about the outdoors is just the heat across the board the heat at the races the heat in florida training he's oh, like you're just snow. constantly fucked he's like i'm cooked constantly yeah 
and you so, go yeah because you you and especially in florida and i actually think it helped me i'll, I'll let you get back to your point no, no, but no, it, it let me it, it let it helps me recover like being in california yep because before man especially when i'm young and like i had some struggles with like anemia and, and things like that i was just overtrained but you go and race on saturday you fly home sunday and you're right back to it Monday and then Tuesday's your big day your two motos bike ride gym everything and so you are just in a constant state of like your body's just shot yeah so I I know what he's saying but yeah continue but yeah so anyway he he said that that would be the schedule he would like to do because he he was like we're talking about the whole you know the tv deal 31 races or like whatever it is that's the big selling point but it's like the summer's just crazy brutal so it's like man to your point and his point you combine those two like you start now and then you you bust out some outdoor rounds and then or even start a little bit later and then you go a1 still a1 weekend but then you do three races and then you go to high point <laughs> and then you do or you, imagine doing a1 a2 parlor san diego hangtown dude Be insane make a swing a full california swing you know i think it's a good idea i've never heard and, and so i've never heard your idea before today and i never heard hunter's idea before i today. never even heard my idea before today i, I just, love that i i the more i think about it the more i think it's like a perfect fix to because it's been like that forever even as i love there's nobody that loves their bikes more than i don't I really don't think so that like is as passionate about it as as i am and still it's like you get 10 rounds in and you're just god i can't wait until outdoors i'm the gets same here. bro I, you know? I, and then i'll go ride <laughs> like we do the supercross yeah. companions and then we'll do like five and then i'm like fuck this I'm, yeah I'm, I'm out i'm done i'm out sunday bro so we got to find a way to mix it up yeah. they're like i think us fans are spoiled yeah dude i'm i mean i think it could work and then i think that you get the summer off i wonder though if the outdoors gets the again this is the behind the scenes shit that you don't think about and it's like i wonder if the fact that you do race in summer when there's no other sports is why the outdoors gets the time that it does so it's like that's the yeah behind that's, see, that's the, the kind of stuff, stuff where you get in a room with dave prater or yeah. davy coombs that you're like oh yeah yeah so there's a lot of that yeah but it's funny just work Oh, definitely. We're on YouTube, man. We'd say whatever we want. Hundred percent. This is our credibility. In Absolutely. This room. We're gonna start a petition. <laughs> uh, so, announcing something that you've said you wanted to do. Yeah. Little little segue, maybe into like the behind the scenes side of it. I'm almost excited. I don't really want to see you retire. Don't want to see you start racing. Kind of excited for you to uh, be one of those dudes. I feel like you could have a crazy career after motocross. Like for everything that you've done in your career you could be the guy that all those accomplishments kind of get mentioned second to what you could do post yeah i think you're that guy i feel you <laughs> yeah, i've been you, walking around I, you know i'm a big law of attraction guy i really think like what you think about and yeah. who you surround yourself with and all this is comes back to you i think it's like pretty to me it's pretty obvious if you pay attention I've been walking around saying I'm gonna call the Super Bowl one day, like just in my house by myself. That's so sick. Just walking around, just I just been saying that, like call my girlfriend up and I'll just tell her, like I'm gonna call the Super Bowl one day. And I, for whatever reason, and life just kind of does this. Anytime anybody stuck a camera in front of my face, I feel like I have so much clarity. Mm. Like I don't even have to think about the things that I'm like I don't even really think about anything. I just talk and it just comes out. And most of the time, people like what I have to say. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's definitely exciting. It's one of those things where, like, I don't want to get too carried away and too focused on it because I yeah. still have a goal now. But in terms of, like, I'm a big plan guy. I have mm -hmm. a 10 year plan, 20 year plan, all this stuff. It's it's twenty. It's it's it's, it's, it's subject to change, but I <laughs> but feel it's, it's a, I f yeah. It's in but, pencil. But I it's feel in like it, it, yeah, I feel like it's important to know where you're going. Mm. Like, I want to wake up every day and have a, and have a like. I don't know. Direction. Just have a direction. North. You yeah, want to know where exactly, north is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, and that's definitely, you know, that's definitely a part of it is, um, it's one of the reasons why I moved to California. Yeah. You know, because I want to be out here when I, whenever I'm done and able to kind of network and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Have you got any, I guess, projects you're working on now that go toward, like, are you doing any 
coaching around it are you, i mean the podcast yeah. is a, a good step but yeah podcast is just practice for me too and it, it serves a purpose it's yeah. good unique content that i can i can put out um i have done some i have done some work with with some coaches on Sick. on that yeah so. so there's a there's a good guy that everyone's plugged in with right like ricky's used him I think yeah Blair. he's romo's guy yeah yeah uh, i've worked with him a couple times yeah so that's the same guy yeah, yeah 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 he's great apparently he's a g oh yeah he's awesome and what's what's sort of, what sort of stuff do, do you work on there because i mean i'm, I'm so not, i'm fu- not i'm not i'm out i'm not giving i can't oh, I don't, yeah, fair, I, fair, I don't fair. know i just no, that's know. Fair. yeah i just don't even know I guess I've never met a dude like that. I don't even know as someone that sits in front of a camera for a living. I'm like, what would he say? What would you do? I know there's stuff there. It's a lot but of, I'm like completely ignorant to it. Yeah. It's a lot. I mean, even it's difficult to be yourself in the booth. You know, like people think it's I don't know, you have to kind of you gotta be really you you got to be okay to take some swings in there, you know, to mm. actually like, even when I'm doing it, sometimes I, like I have a bunch of things that I can say, like I have a bunch of knowledge and things I can say, but you also have to make sure that it's like going to make sense and it's not going to be too far out there. And so it fits the it's kind of, and yeah. And you kind of, kind of feel like you have to like initially, I, I did my first guest appearance when I was 17. So like initially you feel like you have to be like professional and formal and like this guy or like mm. this guy. You know, but you, you have to, you know, the best commentators have their own thing. Like they're their yeah, own. Yeah, they're them yeah, doing they're that them. thing. Exactly. Yeah. But you still have to fit that into kind of these parameters and this time frame. And yeah, yeah. Um, you have a producer in your ear telling you, you know, this, that. There's a lot of things that, that go into it. It's a lot more like it'd be way easier just to put the race on the on the computer right here and just you and I talk about it. I could say yeah. 10 things that blow your mind, but then you have, you add in all these other factors and it be, it gets more You got 20 seconds but to I, a break. You got two yeah. people there. You got a producer in your ear. And I don't know, like I, nothing in life's a certainty. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I won't be that good at it or maybe, maybe I'll be fantastic and be awesome. But I feel like it's something that I'm like kind of born to do. Like yeah. I, it's always come pretty easy for me. And it won't always be easy. There's going to be challenges. It'll be ups and downs like anything else. But it's definitely something that um, I think about from time to time. Yeah. No, it's super so. It's super cool. Like, I, I just, I don't think that there's ever been a guy in the sport that has, it's just such a clear path in the, <laughs> you know, like you could, as a fan, yeah. you could, you know, like the Tony Romo being in the booth, like he crushes it. He does. You know? He's so um, good and i guess you could see that and aaron Rodgers is the same like you can kind of see guys that they would go into that role i don't think our sport has many of them like i think you're the dude i appreciate that which is a it's i guess it's just not something that we're used to you know yeah and it's like there's guys that would be commentating on i mean you see it in moto gp f1 it's like yeah they were good drivers like they had a great career yeah and like anyone would be stoked to have that career but then they become so linked to the sport in such a different way that they probably never would have seen to where the average f1 fan probably doesn't even know they did race yeah i know what you're saying which like that's a good problem to to have yeah and to be like the it's cool to be like the voice of a sport people will associate you with you know like i associate like David Bailey and Art Ekman with like the early 2000s, yep. Travis Pastrana, McGrath, Carmichael coming in. Yeah. Like they're always that in my mind. Yeah. And I just, I love dirt bikes and I love the sport, the industry in a way that I just want to contribute. Contribute. Yeah. I want to, obviously I, my main goal right now is I have a job. Like I, my job is to do well at the races and perform for Kawasaki. And that means more to me than anything. And that, that sweeps everything else under the rug but like in general if you would ask me my goal is just to contribute in a positive way to this mm. industry yeah and that's a good goal to have yeah. i think it's like when it, and when it's genuine too you know oh it's 100 percent. which not not that i'm questioning no that. no no no. it's <laughs> okay uh changing gears a little bit yeah how are you so obsessed with blink 182 See, at the this age is... that you are we've never really spoke about it I, it's my <laughs> well, age like i was 13 yeah when that music yeah, came, like you know five. what i mean i was like i was the dude that they were talking to and you missed it by probably like seven years yeah i was born in 96 it, but you found it yeah so i mean 
for one, I, I've kind of my music has progressed. People know me as the Blink guy. Yeah. I can't say like I. It's been probably a month since I've listened to a Blink song. Like I, I'd, I'd love Blink, and they're like in my heart forever. You know, like they're the top. But it's, it's not like I'm just completely listening yeah, to Blink only, all yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Like I was like kind of a pop, pop punk kind of like emo stuff kid growing up. Yeah. But it was the first um, Bithlow, Orlando, Florida, like the track I grew yeah, up riding, yeah. Night Series. And they had loudspeakers. And this was like 1999, 2000, Enem of the State just came out. All the yep. small things, yep. you know, what's my age again, everything. It was just playing so on the loudspeaker. So it was like it. the, it's my, really my first memory as a child, really, is is hearing that stuff on loudspeakers, like riding my PW50 under the lights. And it was, so it's associated with like my favorite thing ever is riding a dirt bike and finding that love. And then, you, you know how you things have a soundtrack just, to it yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. so it's a yeah. soundtrack to it so it, i can never feel like i just feel so it, it's so much nostalgia and, yeah. and everything wrapped up into that you know and i i just beyond that in in when you know when i first got like an ipod it's like the only stuff i downloaded like right away you know and i, I just like what they're about like just kind of a good metaphor for life like they just send it they don't care like tom's like pretty shitty on the guitar and it doesn't matter <laughs> they can't really see it, yeah it's like it doesn't matter they're yeah. just they just own it and yeah. people are like yes yeah you know i just i did like did you ever about. did you ever listen to the mark tom and travis show live album yeah of course so that that for me that was like what what you just said about like they kind of don't give a fuck yeah that live album so good that was i got it for christmas and it was seriously life-changing because of that like here were these dudes that just didn't give talking about a anything fuck. Dude. and then it's like the end of the song i fucked your mom yeah and it's like every single song in between so like you listen to a regular album and it's a polished song and then it goes quiet and then you go to the next song yeah. and then it's a polished and then you go to the next song but that for some reason that live album completely just changed so good well, even they were doing stuff like that in dude ranch too like the in the songs they were making all these weird noises and stuff stuff that like hurts your ears to listen to but you love somehow <laughs> yeah no it's so true oh, i just always wondered how you got there yeah like because i was that smack bam the age i still haven't met i still haven't met tom mark anybody i need to i want to get travis on the podcast Oh, he, I bet that'd be cool it. and i've met tom i think i told you the night i, I met so. him yeah, actually it was like dead. years I was anybody like, anybody that yeah. knows me if they had if they've ever ran into somebody they've always let me know it's daniel's met him too with blair no uh ricardo oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah he's yeah. done like the i think he had like a you know he's got his macbeth shoe company That's i think right. he did something there yeah 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 so he sent me a picture when he did that i was like god i gotta get i mean he's just down the street from me basically I gotta be able to get in a room with him at some point. I got to. Is he your favorite one? I mean, it's just yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was just, definitely like yeah. That. He's just like I don't know. Yeah. He's just like a big kid. Yeah, you know. Well, I've always liked space and UFOs and stuff like that. It just seems like it's meant to be. <laughs> he's your, that's funny. There's like those people that in life you can see them. And watch the way they move, and you're like, you're like we could be. That's friends. my guy. We could be yeah. friends if we just met. We uh, could be 100%. friends. Hundred percent. Yeah, I have no doubt we'd get along. Yeah, I, I think so too. What else are you into at the moment, music wise? Music wise, man, I actually haven't. I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks. Ooh, like I do not. Like I haven't been that into. Like I'm, I'm on Spotify, and I'll listen to like the last five songs I liked. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't. And then you get to that I've point where it's times, like the old songs that you liked yeah, and, and then, then you're kind of done with yeah, them. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had like a little like kind of house music dancey type phase. Okay. Do you get into Fred again? Oh, yeah. He's amazing. Incredible. Have and that guy like is his... just the happiest dude ever. He's crazy, bro. Like he, crazy. He, you talk about... You know, you talk about like you can you can not be drunk or not be high and you can have a good time and like you wonder what that looks like. That's, that's, that's the guy. Fred again, dude. Yeah. That guy is just beaming. Did you watch his have you like watched his live sets and yeah, show like on YouTube? Yeah, like boiler room and stuff. <laughs> insane. So insane. And just bro. like he's got that you can't help but smile. He's just yeah, insane. And people don't know you like he's like produced of all Ed Sheeran's albums. Yeah. Yeah, insane, bro. There's, there's not a guy that can make normal things so big 
and yeah. cra- and just feel like there's I feel so much. Yeah. Like dude, there's times where I'll He's a, he's a it's it's literally genius like literally. Once you kind of understand like understand a little and see what he's doing in yeah. the moment and stuff, but like dude, there's literally times where I can't listen to him. Really? Cuz I feel t- it takes yeah. me to a literally makes me feel shit and yeah. i'm like i don't have fucking time yeah, for yeah. i just want to i want to listen to that but it's like he is so yeah amazing. the last couple of years it's just and i feel like he just like six months ago like really mainstream Blue. caught on yeah. yeah i have ricardo to thank for that one he gave me that album. really yeah yeah and i was just like you motherfucker he's a dude did you share much music with him i dude that's how i mean that's how we started talking back in the day we'd always post our stuff on twitter like our songs and it would always be kind of similar in the ballpark so, yeah, yeah 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 he's the he's one of you know how you have like music friends yeah where they're like they'll say, he's like one of one yeah. of those guys he's given me so yeah, much more than yeah. i've given him too really <laughs> i'm just i used to be like You're just a taker yeah i'm a big time taker when it comes to that i used to be so into like finding new shit and these days it's just not i just ain't doing yeah it. i'm just not there right now i'm reading what, to what books so i wanted to ask you before about books that you'd read what are some of the best books that you've read? The one that probably had the most profound impact on my life is it's called Stillness is the Key mm-hmm. by Ryan, Ryan Holiday. Ryan Holiday. Yep. Yeah, he's like, I, I just got really into the, in some of these emotional things, challenges that I've had in my life, like I just gravitated towards the, the Stoic philosophy. Yeah. Um, and obviously he's kind of like the, the guy for that, right? Kind of right now. Robert Greene is another yep. guy that I... Yep. Um, 48 laws of power yeah i've yeah. Uh, read read that one and then uh, I actually haven't laws read that of, one. Laws of human it's it's really good yeah um laws of human nature i'm on that one right now yeah but stillness is the key was massive and ego is the enemy yeah because it's kind of one of those questions like i i've always felt like i'm a nice guy compassionate guy whatever and i'm like how does that really fit into mm. being a good athlete like can i do both can i be nice can i be compassionate and can i you know because it seems like you know, you, you kind of hear the stories of like Kobe and these other you know, like guys like being an asshole and, you know, kind Michael of just Jordan being and Michael Jordan, yeah, just like, yeah. ah, you know, and I'm like, well, that's just not like, it's not I, don't get me, don't get me wrong. Like I can get really intense. Like, it, like I can get, my girlfriend says I can get scary sometimes, you know, yeah. like I, I have my things where like you would think I'm an athlete, but you kind of wonder it goes back to what you were talking about earlier like you're in this box like i don't think i can leave this and still and still do it but that book answered that question for and, me and what, like, what what was the takeaway um i mean there's a lot it's it's, it's been a little while since i read it but i'll leave i'll leave it up to the guy i'll yeah. leave it up to whoever wants to read it it's yeah. uh it's more so something like I don't know. I'm weird with books like that. Like I used to think I didn't, I didn't used to read a lot because I felt like if I didn't remember everything, then yeah, I'm not getting yeah, anything out yeah, of it. But yeah, what yeah. you don't understand is that everything you read and all this knowledge that you consume, it kind of like becomes your intuition. You yeah. know, it kind of just, kind of just morphs your brain over time. So I, I have like a, like a massive folder of like the biggest takeaways from each book oh, that I've yeah. read. And so if I'm, I normally go through it at least like once a month and check it out. And that's, and that's my thing is because like off the top, I've never been great. And like, I guess I feel like I'm intelligent, but remembering recall, things like yeah. that. So yeah. f- a big thing for me has just been writing stuff down. Like I write a lot. You see me on a plane yeah, on a Sunday, yeah. leaving a race. And it's like, I have my, I have my little journal in my hand and I'm just yeah. jotting everything down. Like yeah. I have the past six years of races. Like that's just so stacked. sick. Yeah. That's so I always really have, cool. you know, you always have reference points and you also forget, even this year for me, you f- forget how far you've come. Yeah. You know, you just assume like, like Iron Man, I got sixth place, whatever, but I, w- I was not stoked on it. And you go back through and you check your stuff, like check your thoughts out from like January and you're like, dude, remember. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you just, you, like you just, you just want more. Yeah. And that's what we're all, you know, we're, that's what we're wired for. Like we're wired to survive, want more, want more. But to have that reference point is has been massive for me, like just in terms of growth and, and kind of having. It's like a it's kind of like stability yeah. in a way, yeah. you know, is that you always have 
kind of always know where, like, like I said, like I know where I'm going. I know where I've been yeah. and it's just, I, I like it on paper. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I've, I've started doing actually. So my brother, when I was staying at his place when I was in Australia and uh, he was writing every morning, just get up and start. Yeah. And I love writing. Like that's literally what I thought my career yeah, was going to be. Like at some point I'm definitely going to write books. Like remember I used to do those columns for trans world back in the day. I don't know if you remember. Nah. Yeah. They, Don at, Transworld. I started writing. I had like a. What was it called? Wait a minute. What was it called? A C C A. Like Adam C. It's real coming attraction. Ah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I did yeah. it for like two years. It was like a twelve and thirteen year old. My people used to think that my mom wrote them, but really? I just love getting my. Yeah. Did you get extra credit at school for that? Shoot, no. I wish. Dude, you should have. You should have been. I was campaigning. crushing it. I was crushing you were crushing it, it anyway. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I started writing some stuff down. Um, I went. I literally just went and bought a like a journal when uh, when I saw him doing it you know competitive brother shit yeah totally and uh yeah i'm just like dude why do i not do this you know like why is this not a regular thing and that's become like i've kind of you know working my way through yeah this. and it's sometimes i'll even find my even with meditation or journaling it's like sometimes i'll tell myself i don't have enough time or prioritize yeah. other things and you always end up coming back you know you always end up coming back to it like one well, i think habits are everything right dude. like establishing good habits is have you read atomic habits yeah surely yeah Yeah, i have yeah. a long time i was 14 maybe really yeah. that's sick i uh, wish i, I don't know I, whenever it came when did it come out dude i don't even know i feel like i was younger yeah. i don't know yeah that's one book that i'd say that and waking up are the two books that had the most impact on my life and probably the hobbit i read that in grade three did you yeah that was like i don't f- think i read a book until dude. i was I used to I used to hate school so much so I had to go to this Catholic school right yeah and I used to fucking hate it so much that I used to go to class they'd call roll I'd say that I was there and I'd just get up and leave literally and I would walk to the library and I'd just read next class had come well it's better than going and smoking crack on the corner <laughs> i never did any of that which was which was no good. crack there, there was that around and i managed to stay away from it's that it's not bad but yeah i i literally would just piece out every single class and the, I, I spent all of like year three reading the hobbit i think that that book probably changed my life my yeah my relationship with learning is kind of different because it, it was never it was never like uh i never felt like i had anybody my mom helped me with school you know, obviously you have to have the books, you got to order the stuff. And she helped me along with some stuff like math numbers. Uh, I, I don't know. I wasn't, yeah, I I'm wasn't retired. very, I wasn't, yeah, I really wasn't it there. I'm still bad. Like history, social studies, English, even science, English, stuff like that for me is like cake. cake yeah. <laughs> but numbers I'm out, yeah. you know, so she helped, she did help me a lot, but it was all like, I always felt like I was letting the family down if I didn't perform well on yeah. a dirt bike, you know, it wasn't there. So that was the primary, like, that was at the forefront of my mind, even when I was doing school, you know, so I, I almost at one point almost kind of felt bad that I cared as much about, about it as school. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, was that, yeah, I guess, I guess I look back, I look back and wish that I, that I embraced it a bit more than I did yeah. now. But then you realize like you can, you can pretty thing. much learn about anything you want. Yeah. Like I was just on Wikipedia this morning for the first two hours uh, reading about like um king charles the first and his son and like how the um they abol- abolished the the monarchy for like a 10-year period and then like i, I read for you know i just enjoy just like learning yeah, yeah i mean yeah. i'm never gonna use that anywhere on a party or something like uh, yeah you know i just yeah so it's interesting it's just something i found out about myself that i that just yeah. i like doing for no nobody pushed me or yeah you know that's cool uh when you when you say like you felt this pressure to win and like you didn't want to let your family down when you look back at it now how right did you get that like how right were you about the level of let down that you would have put on your family if you let them down like do you and i guess a was it were you making a bigger deal out of it mentally than what it actually was or was it very justified the the care you know what do you get what i'm trying to say it's kind of like a complicated question but no it's not very because i think about i over dramatized a lot in my life when i look back at it from this perspective but at that time that's all i had was that perspective if that makes sense i think i have a much more compassionate view of kind of the environment than 
I was very angry for a long time, just really mad. Like that, that showed itself a lot. Um, but it was hard. Like it realistically, it was, it was pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I wasn't too far. You went far off, off the mark. If anything, it was the other way. Like if anything, I hmm. told myself it was totally chill. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's kind of what got me in trouble. Yeah. But like you said, it's one of those things where everybody has, everybody's doing their best. Everybody has trauma they're dealing with themselves. And at the end of the day, if it wasn't for the people that I had, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. And as I told you earlier, it's like all these things happen that kind of like it's worked out. Like yeah. I'm in a good place now. I have a great girlfriend. I have a great job great home enjoy my life so yeah. i'm not gonna look back and be like yeah oh man why'd you do that you know it just is like yeah. it just is what it is and it's how it happened and i do think that sometimes i do wonder like if i was properly developed you know like if i was i had more resources to kind of develop my talent yeah and i was able to kind of have more mental and emotional stability like how good I could be I I sometimes I'm not gonna lie sometimes I feel like I was cheated out of that a little bit but I'm here now and yeah. I love where I'm at yeah so it's not something that I spend a lot of time it's hard with, though you know it's it yeah with it, the with the like the part like when you look back and you think about like there's just so much emphasis and you can see this everywhere in our sport particularly like you can really see it but i'm sure it happens in every sport where it's like there's such a focus on developing the athlete and not the human yeah and that's what like man i love i love my dad i love my mom like i love my family you know i it's not a it's not a blame game for me mm. you know what i mean like it it just and, and to be honest with you like i wanted to do whatever it took mm. and if that's what it took i was whatever like mm. i'll deal with it like yeah i've I, I do have some like it like i do have some things i need to work through also who doesn't yeah and um yeah it's it's not you know, everybody, I guess one thing I want to specifically clarify is everybody had my best interest yeah. and heart, yeah. you know, and the intention was good. Life is not perfect. Yeah. And that's fine. Like I, I don't, I'm not an angry guy anymore. Like yeah. it's, it's worked out. So yeah. I, at the end of the day, I'm grateful for the sacrifices of my, my mom, my dad, my sister, even um, my grandparents helped out a ton early in my career. Like if it, w it wasn't perfect, but it got me here. It's like the top 1% yeah. of 1% of dirt <laughs> yeah. bike racers that ever get to do stuff like this. And I owe that all to them. Yeah. So it wasn't perfect, but I'm not here being like, poor me, yeah. look at me. It's just, yeah. It's and just I, life. And I asked that because I, I, I probably had guilt, but in the opposite way. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I probably tormented myself through my childhood way more than I should have. Yeah. So it's I like, think, I'm looking back, you know what I mean? Like I'm looking in that yeah. lens and, and I'm I, like, fuck. I, I also, I, I will say that I was probably a little bit more of an asshole than I led myself to believe. Like some of the traits that professional athletes like, to get to this level you got to be like a certain that's level that's what you're talking about before you that gotta, kobe that MJ. you gotta you have to have a certain of this like Cunt. fuck you kind of <laughs> yeah. like and i was definitely like really stubborn crazy strong-willed and i'm sure that was frustrating for my parents yeah. you know like yeah. i wasn't gonna i'm not wasn't backing down to anybody like i i would listen because i knew i had to to get better but like if i thought somebody was wrong like i would tell them you know and it wasn't always pretty so <laughs> yeah. i don't want to paint this picture like i'm some saint kid yeah, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah it's it goes both ways yeah so when coop was on he talked about uh his relationship to you as a kid and like the outside looking in you know looking at what you had going on and then he said you guys had the conversation 
on the the plane what what was that like was that cool to kind of like have that that moment so cool yeah i you spend your whole life going to the same events doing the same things and you never you never know the guy yeah you know you just yeah i spent a lot of you know i think anybody that was a threat obviously i was on top when i was an amateur and anybody that was a threat to me i was like fuck that guy basically (laughs) you know it wasn't personal but it was just like nah like i um, but I think as I've gotten older and I've realized the amount of work that it takes for all involved to get to this place, like, um, like I have no problem being like, I, I genuinely am happy for other people. That's how I've yeah. always been. I, I'm not that type of jealous guy. So I, I've genuinely where some people would be like, Oh, you know, he's one of supercross championship he's done this and like i'm looking at that like man i wish i should have done i'm like that's cool because like i really know that guy's like i remember racing Moser valley with that guy in like 2002 he's on a polini like rolling around you know (laughs) and now he's crushing it. that's awesome (laughs) yeah and so that's kind of just how i view life and so you know at least as i've gotten older and you know i got a lot of respect for him and it was cool to to yeah, it's funny. We just ended up sitting next to each other. Like, and you just ne- you would think it would have happened at least once. Yeah, true. Yeah, way. never, never did. So it was cool. And I think you just you both just realized that you're both just human beings. Like he's just yeah. another. He's just a dude. Yeah. You know, obviously very accomplished, talented dude. But yeah, we're all just. You know, we've kind of walked the same path so there's yeah. like a camaraderie and a respect yeah, for sure a respect there that's really well it's a relatability that yeah. oh, me and you could never have no matter yeah, what yeah exactly no matter it's what like we the, could never we relate. are the only ones that have walked this yeah. path and i think when you get to the level that we're at now that be, you know he has a family now and like it's like dude we both kind of made it a little yeah, we bit bled, like, we and, bled and, for like this. In, in, we bled for this and yeah and when i say that it's not like a from place from settling because some you know some people say as soon as you feel like you've made it like you're fucked yeah that's not it's not like what i carry in every day but you have these moments of reflection where you're like yeah wow yeah wow like i can't believe that we're both still here doing this sitting on this plane you know going yeah, to this race exactly. all these years later and it's just it's just not that deep anymore yeah. you know like i still want to kick your ass <laughs> yeah. but it's just it's not like riding on everything like i'm gonna be okay yeah otherwise what so, did you cool. what did you take away from that conversation with him like was there anything that you learned cool that you didn't think or like was it in any way surprised because that's like a if a moto fan could be a fly on the wall, that's a conversation that a lot of people would want to hear. What I take away from it, I mean, I just think that we're a lot more alike than you would think. You know, you when you're around somebody like that for a long time and you don't converse, you, you assume a lot. We assume mm. a lot about other people, and you you bridge the gap. He did something like this, so he must be like this or that, and it's just I don't know. He was a lot more just like down earth and relatable. You know, we just had a normal conversation and um, it was cool to, I don't know, I guess it was cool because there was part of me that, like, I'm just glad that we just kind of put that to bed a mm. little bit, you know, it's always it's like been like that. Was never it there, was like, but it for was me, there. it was never there yeah. and people like, I don't know, I feel like people made it something and I'm like, yeah, like I just, I'm stoked for the dude. Yeah. Like he's awesome. <laughs> so I, yeah, I basically just told him that. That's and yeah, and he, you know, it was cool to hear he's got respect for me and um, just a couple of dudes that have like lived literally, crazy life. literally lived the dream. Yeah. Like so cool. Yeah. Well, we've, uh, we've gone over three hours. There's a lot more shit we could talk about. Uh, we can do it again. I'm say, just glad we finally. I'm so glad we finally. Did I this. told you last week. I said you have my word. I will be in here because yeah. we've been trying to nail this down for a while. I'm really glad it worked out the way that it did. It would have been cool to do it the other way or any other time. I would have said yes to a podcast with you, but to actually get to like, yeah, you know, I'm exactly. I kind of wanted to wait until you were here. Yeah, no, I'm glad it worked out. But so this room's going to change. Okay. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm going you know, to completely. It'll be like an legit studio so this is legit to me yeah God, it's just soundproof <sighs> we'll, we'll get it we'll get it even better i'm like pretty, pretty you should keen. see my podcast set i mean you have seen it it's normally just like in a motel six yeah but so like, this is you just like got the six of iron man and you you know what i mean like fifth I'm, bro fifth sorry fifth. i think got, i went six six for fifth oh, whatever <laughs> consistency but uh 
yeah so it'd be cool to like have you come into the full experience of the tv maybe just talk about a bunch of random shit yeah let's do it that's one of the things that i love about you is that there's so much depth you know like there's we could literally go in any direction yeah. and we'd be able to talk for three hours i know so this is flown by yeah so for to have you here and available and around i think we could do a bunch of cool shit so absolutely look forward to it and thanks for having me mate i respect the fuck out of you likewise you're a, you're a legend of a dude and uh i really appreciate your time thank you thanks man you're awesome we are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.